What is up, adventurers? How are you? And welcome. It's another one of our Slant Alpha adventures. And this isn't the plane you probably expected to see tonight. At least it's not if you uh, were looking at the show schedule. But uh, yeah, we've had to make a last minute change in plans. We've had a lot of challenges tonight. And we're not even off the ground yet. So I don't know how this is going to go. But I've, I've built in some extra time before our planned departure just to kind of go over what's going on here and we've had some additional challenges today which we might get into depending on time we are performing the boston virtual artcc's wings over new england training flights this is a series of six vfr and 24 ifr training flights that are published on the boston virtual artcc website and the idea is that they're very much self-study you read through each lesson and uh you know you read on your own and they, they often include links to outside resources so that you can understand the uh, procedures and get links to charts and other resources flight planning resources and such that you need in order to successfully set yourself up to uh, perform the flight and then you get on the network whenever there is Boston Virtual ARTCC Air Traffic Control Online. And uh, today we've got the illustrious Sheed doing one of his 10-hour marathons on Boston Center. We may, in fact, well, we've also got a ground controller here at Bradley. Um, so we've got some additional ATC, and Boston tends to be one of the more active groups, so that we may, we may even have more of them pop on as we go. Oh, and Redneck Love and Life has already checked into the channel as well. Hello, Redneck. Appreciate you stopping by here, man. Um, we are... So anyway, I'm sorry. So what, what I was saying was you get online when, uh, when Boston's got coverage. And depending on which flight you're doing, you might not need the entire center on. You sometimes, uh, certain ones, you could just actually, like the VFR-1, you just need like uh, Nantucket Tower. You, or you can actually move it to whatever other tower. Uh, some of them you need only certain approaches on. Um, but a few of them you do need Boston Center. I think this is one of them. Eric FX is here. Eric, how are you? Um, but anyway, this is uh, this is one where we do need Boston Center. But fortunately, we got Mr. Sheed that's doing one of his 10-hour marathons. So if you want to see tonight's flight from the scope um, sco uh, point of view, you can check his stream out simultaneously or watch it back later. Twitch.tv slash... Sheed, except you put a three in and where the second E would go, so it's Sierra Hotel 3 Echo Delta. Or I guess it's where the first E would go. Duh. Yeah, to the middle. Anyway. Um, Sierra Hotel 3 Echo Delta. That just trips right off the tongue, doesn't it? Anyway, um, so we've progressed through this series before. They added then four additional flights to the IFR series. And so now I'm going through the entire progression again on stream, and then I'm saving those to a playlist so that those who are considering going through the training series, you know, have some example. Some of some of it's a good example, and some of it's kind of a little bit of what not to do. Uh, but but you know, some decent example to kind of model what should be done and, and what you need to do in order to uh, uh, to receive each rating. And then they have a place on their website where they mark which one which pilots have uh, have completed which ones, and then if you complete all 30 of them, 6 VFRs and 24 IFRs, you get special recognition in a little spot on uh, on their website. So, um, 20, 21, 22, and 23 are the four new flights that they added to the program since I completed it last. Most of them I had credit for already, having done the, the whole program in the, uh, previously. Uh, but 20, 21... Uh, I've just recently received credit for, and now 22 tonight we need credit for, and then uh, we'll do one final stream where we'll do 23 and 24, and uh, I'll need credit for first the first of the two flights on uh, <coughs> excuse me on on that evening. But tonight we definitely need to get credit, so it's a good thing that we do have Mr. Uh, Mr. Sheet on, and hopefully we'll fly it well enough that he can give us credit for completing this flight. Wings IFR 22, and, and most of the time I've been doing at least two of these per stream. Tonight, I think we're probably doing just the one. It's a fairly long one. We're from Bradley International all the way up to uh, Bar Harbor, Maine, in the extreme northeastern part of the airspace. And uh, the idea 
and I'll, I'll get into why we had to change planes. The idea for this one is that uh, part of what we are learning in this lesson or, or, or being able to demonstrate in this lesson is the ability to plan for and cope with the weather that we encounter. Which is kind of unfortunate because we've got some. <laughs> we've got quite a lot of it, actually. If I hit play and put this into motion, you'll see. And then the route, I guess we'll just punch in. Uh, KBDL. I'm going to talk about routing at, at extensively before we get going. This is going to be a little bit longer of a setup uh, because this is a little bit more of a complex rating and especially we're, when we're doing it here with uh, non-RNAV capabilities, it's, it gets, make, gets even more complicated and then with the weather that we're experiencing tonight, it's getting even more complicated. Um, so you can see in Sky Vector we've got the text weather which is the dots. As you hover over the dot, it gives you the METAR and then TAF if, if there is one. Uh, we've got the air mitts, and the ones that I, I am most concerned with are the icing air mitts because those are the ones that are most aggressively modeled in both X-Plane and flights in 2020. And then the weather radar is uh, that checkbox there, which you guys have already seen, and then you get the play button down at the bottom that puts that into motion. We'll just put it on the most recent return there. Um, if you click on the airmit, you can read the entire text of it. And the key points here, and it's a little bit small from where I'm sitting, uh, the key points here are the uh, moderate icing between freezing level and flight level 200. Fle freezing level is from the surface up to 8,000. So in some cases, the freezing doesn't start until you hit 8. In other cases, it starts right at the ground level. Um, what is the outside air temp on the ground at Bradley? If we hover over that, we can see, uh, we'll read through that top line there. It's uh, 240 at 5 is the wind. Visibility is 2 statute miles. Light snow and mist. Few clouds at 400. Overcast at 2200. Temperatures minus 1, M01, where it says M01 and M02. That minus 1 and minus 2, the temperature and the dew point. So... It's definitely below freezing at ground level here. So this would be one of the areas within this air mitt where the uh, freezing level would start right at the surface. So that's why we had to switch off from doing this moon at flight in the Mooney. The Mooney, uh, I, I believe this is true in the real world, although I guess every Mooney might be different depending on the owner and what they've done to it. But I believe that in general, the, uh, the Mooney Ovation does not come stock with anti-icing capabilities, and certainly the one that is simulated in Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 is not equipped with any anti-icing capabilities. So that was that was right out. Just like if you're counting from one to three, and you, you know, accidentally find out if you, you know you, you don't want to end up at five, five, five is right out, and so is the Mooney Bravo or the Mooney Ovation rather. Um, anyway. That put us into uh, a little bit of a dilemma because, um, you know, I, I really wanted to do this with radio-based navigation, really wanted to do this in a prop rather than uh, switching back to that working title CJ4. I love that CJ4, and a matter of fact, when we talk about routing, you'll see where the CJ4 would have lent itself pretty well for it. However, um, I just flew the CJ4 two days ago for you on uh, on the Twitch on the VAT USA Twitch channel, and uh, you know I do try to try to do most of my flying in uh, true radio-based navigation fashions. So I uh, decided to just go ahead and switch over into X plane and do it in the DC3. We got some really good anti-icing capability in the DC3. We we're actually discussing it at length in the most recent DC3 stream because we were flying in extreme northeastern Canada. And the topic came up again. So we do know that this plane is uh, more than capable of handling icing conditions. So we will, uh, whoops, we will get on with that. Okay. One of the things that they talk about in the text of the lesson here is the tech route, which is a, you know, kind of a preferred route uh, that keeps you under terminal control, terminal TEC, terminal in route control. And that means that it's a specific route that is designed to get you around from your origin to your destination with, uh, without encroaching on traffic flow in and out of the other airports in the region. Um, 
let's talk let's go back to where it says the tech route I know it says it here okay the current tech route is uh, Barnes Tango 314 Kennebunk Tango 295 Razor well we've got some issues here guys oh I didn't mean to copy that part of the text but anyway okay so there's the route that they want you to do and just to be sure we can actually go back over here under pilots pilot references We'll open this up and we just make sure that this hasn't changed. Here's a preferred route uh, page here and we'll just type in KBDL to KBHB. And again, I'm showing you all this partially to, to show you the process of getting ready for this flight, partially uh, to know how to find these resources for other flights. So Bradley to Bar Harbor, and you can see it is the same one that's in the lesson. It hasn't, hasn't changed. Uh, Barnes BAF is Barnes VOR. Tango 314 Kennebunk, Tango 295 Razor, and then Bar Harbor. So that's all the same as what they just uh, they just gave us. However, there's a problem. We are slant alpha, meaning we're radio-based navigation only. We talked about in our most recent stream in the Douglas that these Tango routes, and of course we found a route that was ambiguously marked up in Canada, but down here at least, this is marked in blue with the arrows in a different style than uh, what you'd see marked for a, uh, a black, a conventional radio-based route. The blue ones are definitely not radio-based. And it, you can see it does come off of a VOR down here, and it, hit, it hits a VOR up here. So you would think that this should be conventionally navigable. But my, uh, my guess is that this signal has been just determined not reliable enough between these two locations. So instead of going out there and tinkering with the towers and playing with interference fields and whatever else they do to radio signals to make them work better instead of spending all that money they were just like ah screw it there aren't that many people that navigate only by radio anyway let's just turn it into an rnav only route and so that means they just turn it blue and they put it a tango rather than a victor and uh, they put all these markings on here with the blue arrows that tell you the direction that you have to uh or plan on tracking when you put in that route into your gps same thing with this Tango 314 coming north and east up to Manchester. And then the Tango 314 continues up here to uh, Kennebunk. And then from Kennebunk, they, uh, it goes over Portland and right up to this point, Razor. And then from Razor, you're direct to Bar Harbor. All right, well, if we're going to do this slant alpha, meaning radio-based navigation only, we're going to have to come up with something different. So we'll back up, back that out. Um, let's start by saying, let's, let's start by looking at the, uh, departure procedure out of, um, Bradley. Let's open that in a new tab. Let's open the coastal nine. Uh, coastal nine looks like it. Okay. Look, coastal nine looks like it goes south and east. That's not going to help us out really. Uh, this is just a the generic vector departure. It looks like the point that's most, we got Providence. This looks like it's off to the east, but we, we do have the Gardner VOR. That's, you know, kind of more north and east, which appears to be more, in the direction we need it to. Let's just double check PVD and GDM. And yeah, so, so Providence is south and east. And uh, well, we, I mean, we could route ourselves from to uh, Providence and maybe up Victor 316 over the Boston. I mean, that's actually not too bad. That's not what I plotted originally. That's not what I plotted originally, but it's not actually that bad. Let's start with what I plotted originally. Well, okay, so there's not a real good way. I mean, Providence, maybe to this point, Millis. And to, uh, my point, my, my goal would be to avoid the Boston Bravo. So let's go back to what I, I plotted originally, which was we're going to take the Bradley 6 to uh, just to Gardner, and then where? Even though we're not going to be flying this airway, we're going to go Gardner direct to Manchester. We can't call that an airway because, you know, again, we're not navigating that Tango 314, but we're going to go Gardner direct Manchester, and then Manchester direct Canabunk. And then Kennebunk, where? Kennebunk, 
Kennebunk, we can go Augusta. Well, actually, Kennebunk. Kennebunk, we could go to this point Sappy, right? Because we do have a reference on the chart. It's a 081 off of Kennebunk to this point Sappy. We got the follow there from Rigorian. Rigorian, how are you? Haven't talked to you in quite some time. I don't know that I've ever talked to you on this stream, but I know that I've talked to you plenty of times on other streams. Appreciate the follow. We're going from Sappy. At this point, we are going to follow the Victor 268 up to Augusta. B268, Augusta. And then from there, it looks like we're kind of east. Uh, Gregorian, yeah, so we can uh, we can probably take that conversation offline. It was um, just a change in priorities once I, uh, I was offered to uh, to become a, a media partner with that sim, but a little more to it than that if you want to talk with me offline about that. Um, so, uh, and then after Augusta, the reason, well, let's we can go Augusta and then direct to the airport, but let's go ahead and I uh, kind of maybe tipped my hand a little bit on what I was thinking, but uh, let's look at the the only approach that we've, the only instrument approach we have that we can follow into Bar Harbor since we're not RNAV is the uh, ILS-22. And uh, it has a feeder off of Bangor. So we want to try to get ourselves up to Bangor, VOR. So if we come back to this, we can see that after Augusta, we could just go direct to Bangor. And then from the Bangor, we could uh, potentially accept a direct clearance onto the ILS-22 with the, uh, the feeder leg from the, um, from the Bangor VOR. So, so there's, our, there's my best attempt at a, at a slant alpha route. Whoops. A slant alpha route that does avoid the Bradley, I mean, I'm sorry, the Boston class uh, Bravo. It does come right over here over top of Manchester, but the, the, the tech route would have come over that way anyway. So we haven't really made matters any worse. We've just made it navigable by VOR. So a couple other things that we need to do in order to, um, to pass this rating. At some point on course, we're going to need to say... Uh, Senator Douglas 514 Delta Victor requesting deviation left of course 30 degrees for weather. Left of course, right of course. I mean, you can you know, kind of change it up as you need to. Um, doesn't really matter where. Uh, you know, maybe here we can go uh, as we're the last piece, we are direct bang, or maybe we can get a deviation, you know, out here if the stuff is still moving eastbound or whatever. What I mean, whatever the situation is at the time, we'll, we'll keep watching the chart here. And we'll make a request. Obviously, we don't have weather radar aboard the plane in the DC-3, but we can kind of keep tabs on Sky Vector and say, uh, yeah, it looks like we got Sky Vector down on our tab. It looks like we might need to de deviate the 30 degrees left of, of our filed course for weather. And they would say, uh, all right, deviation 30 degrees left, of course, approved. Advise when you're able to uh, uh, continue direct Bangor. And so that's something that we'll have to do. Uh, we will have to provide at least one position report our, our pilot, pirate, uh, not pot, not position report, uh, pirate, pilot report, which would be a report of the weather. So if we say that we're receiving, uh, you know, light turbulence or light icing, if we come back to the wings flight, they talk about pirates down here, uh, trace icing, moderate or light icing or severe icing, uh, or if you're going to talk about receiving turbulence, light, moderate, severe, or extreme. Um, it gives you some guidelines on what extreme means, what severe means. Uh, so severe and extreme kind of mean you might be having injuries occur on board the aircraft. So definitely kind of stick with light or moderate unless it's like we think we might die kind of turbulence. Ragori says, good to see you. Uh, still maintaining a respected presence in the community no matter where. Um, I'm going to lurk as I do my own flight. Appreciate having you around, man. Yeah, I've uh, like I said, my priorities have kind of shifted and like we can talk more. Uh, offline about the kind of the different uh, uh, issues that went into that uh, that decision, but uh, but yeah, man, good to see you here. All right. Anyway, um, 
so this this section talks about the different pilots. So we're going to have to deviate for weather um, to not not divert. Divert means like I'm not going to go to my destination anymore. I'm going to go to some other destination. Deviate just means this is the path I filed, but I need to kind of go off of it a little bit, and then I'll go back on it later. That's what a deviation means. So the, the, get it straight in your head what the, what the deviation versus a diversion is. Deviate is a temporary. Diversion is, yeah, we're going to terminate this flight somewhere else. Um, and then we're going to simulate a failure that will not result in an emergency. The, 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 the lesson goes into some discussion here about what uh, emergent situations are, the difference between a mayday and a pan-pan. Um, we are going to simulate a failure of one of our systems that is not going to cause us to have to declare an emergency and uh, that will affect the way we perform the rest of the flight but it's not going to cause us to have to, to, to declare an emergency. And then there's some language here about contact approaches, which is really interesting stuff, not mandatory for the lesson. Uh, to, to pass the rating, you have to do the following. You have to file an IFR flight plan, routing based on current weather, uh, deviates correctly, including, including requesting the deviation and advising of its completion. So whenever when you're done with the deviation, you say, okay, we're able to uh, proceed direct Bangor, uh, now 514 Delta Victor. We are going to provide one uh, pie rep. So we're going to talk about either turbulence or icing or something that we're getting along the way. Uh, we are going to uh, have a minor system failure that we'll, we will need to advise air traffic control about, but we will not have to declare an emergency. And, uh, and then we are going to fly either a contact approach, a visual approach, or an instrument approach to Bar Harbor, or wherever you've de decided to divert to and then cancel IFR if required, which since Bar Harbor is a non-towered field, we would need to get back onto the frequency and uh, cancel our IFR flight plan, which we've done in many of these Wings IFR lessons before, so we should that should be fairly familiar to you if you've seen the series. All right, so that's kind of, a, like I said, a very detailed overview, but because this is a pretty complicated lesson with some pretty... Um, detailed requirements. I figured I would take the extra time and go over them. So there we go. We, um, by the way, I, I have filed an alternate uh, that the, the logical alternate might be Bangor because it's because it's nice and close or it might be Augusta. Uh, with this weather moving north and east though, I went ahead and put in uh, Portland back down here. It's a Charlie back down the uh, coast and it looks like most of the weather is is kind of going to miss Portland north and west of the uh, of the Portland airport and Portland also has a good number of ILS approaches in any different direction that you might need it so uh, so that seems like a better alternate even though it's kind of back toward the where we came seems like a better alternate than these two guys which are closer but they don't have as many different approach options available and they seem like they might still be in the thick of the weather that's kind of moving up that way Although this little chunk here looks like it might be moving toward Portland, so who knows? Maybe that'll end up being a bad choice, too. Who knows? All right, well, let's go ahead and get into the uh, aircraft, shall we? And I don't think I'm connected to that sim yet, either. Oh, one thing I do need to do. Oh, we're talking about alternate minimums. Um, so alternate minimums would be if you, uh, if you needed to divert... And uh, you would want to make sure that the minimums uh, at the alternate airport are at least 600 for, I believe it's 600 for a, non, or for a precision approach and at least 800 for a precision approach, for a non-precision approach. Uh, forecast there at Portland is uh, the 10 statute miles scattered at 25. And if you're looking at the TAF later, it does say uh, there's some light snow in the forecast and whatnot. Um, Three statute miles and overcast at 2,000. So that st should still be plenty for a uh, precision or a non-precision approach uh, if we needed to do it into Portland. But that's a good point um, about the uh, maintaining the alternate minimums there. So we're above them. All right. Now, let's... Uh, oh, and one thing I needed to do. We've, we've run into an issue with... Uh, having a stuck mic occasionally in X-Pilot, and we've been told, this is a complete side note, we've been told that if you go into the settings here and you undo your push-to-talk uh, in the app, 
you know, just hit hit clear current pusher talk assignment, which I did have. I did have it set up as joy one on my on my yoke, but if you clear the push to talk, close that, and then you set the push to talk in the. Uh, I guess it's over here. Uh, in uh, joystick. Well, that keys the cat keys the mic on the Poscon network. I don't think we even have that plug in here anymore. We were just talking about that. It's funny that Gregorian's here and brought that up. Um, but uh, yeah, we just type search X pilot. Yeah, we can uh, apply. Yeah, so that is now our X pilot push to talk, and we are done. Right, so now I'm going to go ahead and connect to the network. Radios are powered off at the moment, but when they get powered up, we will uh, we will check on that. Um, yeah, we'll go through the flight uh, the uh, the checklist here. Now, Fred also says, "Did you buy that New York from the San Diego show?" No, I didn't. Um, I did buy a uh, Honeycomb Alpha used from uh, another viewer, actually. But I haven't set it up yet, so I'm still using my CH for the moment. The reason I haven't set it up is I don't have a solution. So the CH uh, has a yoke and throttle and prop and mix lever built into it. So if I was to switch to the honeycomb, I would not have my uh, my throttle, mix, and prop controls anymore. So I haven't haven't quite figured out a solution for that yet. So the honeycomb mouth is still sitting in the box over there. I know, which is which is depressing to some of you. <laughs> those of you who are still waiting for yours on back order are like how does he have an alpha that he's not using I'll be using it soon anyway um, let's go ahead and get into the aircraft guys and uh, just start powering up go ahead and get the master battery switch on the smoking nav and beacon lights can come on fuel tanks can go to uh, mains Left main and right main. We'll get the cow flaps opened up. Props can go full forward. Throttles will get cracked slightly. And we will start with the mix on the number two side. Mix. Magnetos, fuel pump, prime it, clear it, and start it. Alright, we hear that it roars into life as it should. The oil pressure comes up right away. Fuel pressure is uh, elevated by that electric pump. We'll shut that off and we'll make sure that the engine's own pump is supplying fuel pressure, and it is. The rest of the temps and pressure should start moving into the normal ranges, which we will check on in just a few, but everything seems to be good so far. Since we do have that generator on, we got electrical power in the plane, we can get the inverter and the radio master on, and then let's go ahead and get that flight plan sent. Oh, and I'll go ahead and test the... Yeah, the push-to-talk seems to be working fine from where we set it in the sim, so hopefully that'll eliminate the stuck mic issues we've been having with uh with x pilot uh let's go ahead and send flight plan we are ifr we are going to be kbdl you know, all of a sudden my uh, keyboard was debating whether it wanted to be useful to us uh bdl to bar harbor and uh, portland was the alternate we talked about departure time we're going to call it 0100 which is top of the hour time en route we think it'll be an hour and 40. We've got 410 on board. Cruise speed 180. Uh, we didn't talk about cruise altitude. I'll come back to that. 9,000 is what we filed. And uh, we'll go back to the planning page and I'll just paste this in. So it's the Bradley 6, which we would be assigned if we didn't file it anyway. Gardner, Manchester, Kennebunk, Sappy, Victor 260 at Augusta, then Bangor, and then. Uh, straight on to Bar Harbor from there. Um, when you do the Boston Virtual ARTCC wings, 
IFR or VFR flights, they like if you put that in the remarks. So we'll file that. And while we've got this over here, we do have, uh, like I said, we got a, brown, a ground controller. And uh, we do have an ATIS running here. Juliet. 350 at 5. One and three quarter miles, light snow and mist. Few at 400, overcast 22, temps minus one. Two nine or eight eight is the altimeter. They're uh, they're using six and three three. Three five zero at five. I guess our 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 preference would be three three, but we'll take whatever they. It's it's only five knots. We'll take whatever they uh, take whatever they decide we should. And. Uh, Info Juliet. So 2988 is what we said, right? Okay. Run down here and set that. And field elevation at Bradley, I think it was 130 something or other. Let's. 2988. So there's 2988. What's the charted field elevation? 130 something or 170? It's 173, and that's reading just a shade over 180, which is fine. Yeah, if it's within 75 or so, you, you figure that's okay, but that's within about 10 feet, so that's good. We'll take it. We'll buy that for a dollar. All right, let's go ahead and ring up our ground controller, get our clearance. He is going to be a 121 niner. I guess I shouldn't. Assume gender. I think it's he. I believe I saw the name earlier. All right, I'm gonna get ready to copy our clearance down. Oh, and before we copy our, or before we request our clearance, let's fill in as much as we know. Um, top altitude here is four thousand. The expected cruise would be 10 minutes after. Departure frequency, I just happen to know. You don't always know the departure frequency, but today we can deduce it because the only person that's uh, working the airspace above Bradley Ground is Boston Center on 134.7, so we can pretty much assume 134.7 is going to be our departure frequency. We don't know the departure runway because it could be either 6 or 33, and... Uh, did we get a, uh, I guess we get the airport diagram up in front of us too. Uh, parked over here at TAC Air. So 3-3 would be the better taxi for us anyway, but it's also more favorable wind-wise. Uh, obviously, it's plenty of length, 6,800 feet. So uh, we'll, we'll cross our fingers for 3-3, but we'll take either, like I said. And uh, the call sign here is Bradley. Bradley Tower, Bradley Ground. Bradley, Bradley Ground, Douglas 514 Delta Victor, information Juliet IFR to Bar Harbor. November 514 Delta Victor, Bradley Ground. Good evening, sir. Current request, standby. All right. While we're waiting on that, is there anything that we can... November 514 November. Delta Victor, Bradley Ground. Are you looking for Wings IFR 22 tonight? I'm sorry, that's affirmative. Wings 22, and we know we didn't file the tech route uh, since we're slant alpha. Stand by. Okay, so he's got to coordinate up the chain, make sure that, that Sheed's got the uh, bandwidth to uh, accommodate the Wings 22, and while we're waiting for them to get back to us. Yeah, so that was the other thing I forgot, and he alertly, like I, did, I put it in the remarks of the flight plan, but uh, he alertly called me out. They do they do uh, recommend or request that you, that you state that as part of your IFR clearance request if you do want one of those training flights, so I missed that, but he caught it and reminded me. Um, anyway, we don't yet know our squat code. Uh, nav and ADF tuners I'm going to go ahead and set as needed uh, just based on the Bradley 6 to uh, Gardner. Uh, obviously we'll change things up if he gives us something different, but 110.6 uh, is the frequency for the first VOR station we need. 
So we'll go ahead and get that tuned in. And then again, we're not going on any airway from there, so there's no particular radio we need to be going on. But just in case we're not yet receiving Manchester, we'll just follow the direction that uh, Sky Vector says it is, which happens to coincide with the direction of that Tango airway. So again, we're kind of going on this Tango airway, but we're not really navigating it as a Tango airway. But it's a 071 outbound, and then 144 on the other side. So we'll get both of those things set, and then I'll talk again. I did did mean to come back and talk more about the altitude. So there's 144, 071. We'll spin it around. I did want to talk about the altitude that I chose, which was 9,000, and why did I choose 9,000? So that appears to be about a 071 there. Our direct to uh, that first VOR Barnes will be read off of the HSI. So there we go. Now the reason we chose 9,000, uh, you'll see that along this route you can go as low as 3,500. All along this route you can go as low as 2,600. You're not on a route here. Uh, on this route you only need to go as high as 3,000. And then we're not on a route here. All right, so why, if, if this route allows you to go as low as like 2,600, 3,000, why did I go all the way up to 9, especially with the freezing conditions being what they are? Well, guess what, guys? Regardless of the fact that we are navigating along this path, we're navigating at slant alpha, meaning that we're not following this with a GPS like this route requires. That means two things. Number one... We might not have a signal as low as 3,500 to receive in order to track that path. Number two, we're probably not going to be following that path as laterally accurately as we would if we were doing it via GPS. So because we need, might need to go higher for a signal and because we might be weaving off that path because of the inherent inaccuracy in uh, radio-based navigation, we can't abide by these altitudes. we got to go by the off-airway altitudes that are in this area. 6,500, I think up here it goes to 7,100. Yeah, again, so same concept here. Even though 2,300 is safe on this airway, we may be not on this airway as accurately as we need to be in order to be safe at 2,300. So we, in order for us to be safe, we have to be above this altitude, meaning that our, our next eastbound IFR altitude would be 9,000. So, a little higher than we'd like to be in this kind of weather, but that's why we chose 9,000. Again, we're, 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 we're following this path-ish, but we're not gonna be following it as accurately as, it, as we would if it was a true Tango airway that we were following via GPS. So for those two reasons, signal strength questions and uh, accuracy of navigation questions. We can't rely on those altitudes to keep us safe. All right, anyway, we're waiting for that clearance. What else can we do while, we, while we're waiting? I'm gonna kick that right. We've been sitting here running just the right main. I'm gonna run it off the left main tank for a little bit and just to avoid accidentally running both engines off the left main, I'm gonna cross it up. Left engine is going to run off the right main when we eventually get it started. Right engine is going to run off the left main while we're sitting here. And that way, you'll notice the right main is already down to about 96. Number five, one, and the left four, one is still Delta about. Victor, the ground, clans available, advisor to copy. 514 Delta Victor, fire away. Number 514 Delta Victor is clear to the Bar Harbor Airport by the Bradley 6th departure. Radar vectors. Golf Delta Mike then has filed. Climb That's maintain 4,000 initially. 4, Expect 9,000. One two minutes departure. Departure frequency with center 134.7 squawk 7307. All right, clear to Bar Harbor Bradley 6. Radar vectors Gardner then has filed. We'll maintain 4,000, expecting 9,010. 134.7 and 7307, 514 Delta Victor. Number 514 
four Delta Victor, Rebec correct. Your wings I for twenty two is approved. Advise ready to tax with information kilo and squawk mode, Charlie. We'll go and do we have a, a departure runway? Uh there's gonna be departing runway tree tree. Alright, three three, we'll fetch Kilo, we'll let you know when we're ready. Five and four Delta Victor. All right. Looks like the weather got a little worse. <laughs> okay. Uh, so we got all that. Let's get back to uh, back to our checklist. So we got our clearance. We can get that squat code in seventy three oh seven. Seventy-three oh seven. Uh, you know what? I so when I get a, a squat code that starts with seven, a lot of times I try to tune the little number first. That way, I don't accidentally squawk like an emergency code, like I almost did just there. But uh, fortunately, seventy-three is okay. So I'm going to pop that into uh, altitude mode, and that should also activate the mode Charlie in the pilot client, which it does. So there we go. Navin ADF tuners we set and uh, we talked about already. Uh, fuel quantity, we are starting with 418 total gallons, so that's just over 100 per tank, and I think that's what we had. Of course, we've burnt the right one down just under 100. The left one's got just over 100, and we're working on that. And then the left, the left and right aux tanks have just over 100 as well. So we're good. And uh, like I said, we've crossed things up just so that we're drain out the left main while we're sitting here on the ramp getting ready to fire up number two, which or number one, rather, which we're going to do in just a moment anyway. Good fixings is here. Yeah, we're in the DC-3. Uh, I had to switch up from the Mooney because of the icing conditions in this area. But uh, Wings IFR-22 does not... Well, I don't think it prohibits, but it certainly doesn't recommend that you mess with the weather. Part of the point of the lesson is to deal with the weather that you got there, so figured, well, if we're going to have to deal with the weather, then we better fly into it with a plane that can handle it, and uh, that won't get knocked out of the sky by it. So, here we are. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain. On behalf of Slant Alpha Airways, we'd like to welcome you aboard Flight 514 of service to Bar Harbor. We'll be departing here from the terminal momentarily, expecting an on-time departure at the top of the hour. Cruising altitude is going to be 9,000 feet, and the flight time once airborne, one hour, 40 minutes. Buckle in and relax. We'll be underway soon. Thanks again for flying with us on Slant Alpha Airways. It's time to get those doors closed. Yep, I think we'll do it. There we go. Let's go ahead and get seatbelt signs on. Go ahead and get the left engine up and running. That means the mix, magnetos, fuel pump. We'll prime it, clear it, and start it. There we go. We hear it roar into life. Check that the oil pressure comes up right away. It does. Fuel pressure is elevated by that electric pump being on. So we will sure, we'll turn off the electric pump, turn on the generator. Mr. Al South MIA has checked in. How are you, sir? Pleasure to see you here, my friend. Weather is uh, well, there's a little chillier up here than you're experiencing, I'm sure. All right, fuel pressure is uh, good. The temps on the number two side are in the normal ranges. Temps on the number ones will be working their way in that ballpark soon. Uh, with the uh, with the number one running, we can sync our headings. We're pointed at a, uh, what is that, a 015 right there, maybe a 014. So we'll spin these around and match it. I guess that way. Top half of that would have set the zeros since we're not really going to need it right away. And then this one, uh, yeah, this one will go that way. Go 014. All right, since they're all in agreement that we're facing at a 014, we are good to go with those. At this point, we will go ahead and check our flight controls. Now, I'm going to make the yokes visible for this. 
but we're not really checking to see whether the yoke moves. We're checking to see whether the external controls all move as they should, freely and correctly. So somebody outside the plane will watch those, and we'll do that in a uh, predetermined order so that they know that the controls are working the way they should, and we'll give them, they'll give us a big thumbs up once that's been done. Captain Scientist with the resub, thank you so much. Evening, slant and chat. Evening slant to you, sir. Slant a coin. All right, thank you so much. Appreciate the continued support. Uh, trim can be set to neutral. Uh, there might be a uh, prescribed setting for your takeoff weight, but uh, neutral seems to work, and I tend to load it up right near the max gross anyway every time, so we will do that. That's fine. Uh, I like to set flaps one, even though it's not textbook to set flaps one. If you've got plenty of runway like we do here, I just prefer the way the plane handles on a flaps one, so that's kind of the way I do it regardless. Tailwheel can come unlocked. Uh, our taxi route should be a fairly straightforward one. We're over here at TAC Air, over on the east side of the field, and the taxi would be southbound on Echo, and then Tango, it looks like that's at Lima. So Echo, Tango, Lima, and then out on 3-3 is what we will expect, and we'll see if we get something really bizarre, but other than that, I think that should be a fairly straightforward one. Need to trim my takeoff weight, if you know what I'm saying, this is good fixes. So yeah, well, don't we all? <laughs> Alright, taxi lights can come on. Lights are on, no one's home, and let's get ready to head west. Go west, young man. That'll be over our left shoulder. Uh, let's go ahead and fetch Kilo, by the way. We said we would. Let's not lie about it. Three four zero at six or three three is still the runway we want. One and one quarter now, light snow and mist, overcast at thirteen. Temps minus one, still two nine or eight niners, so we can knock the altimeter up just a notch. Everything else is pretty much the same. So not much changed, but uh, enough change for them to update it, and so we'll adjust accordingly, and we are ready to go. Brad LeGround, Douglas 5, went forward out the Victor Information Kilo, attack air, ready to taxi. Number 514, Delta Victor, thank you for Kilo. Point three three taxi via Echo Tango Lima. Three three via Echo Tango Lima five and four Delta Victor. All right, that's exactly what we said. You see that you, you might see at the very bottom that my left rudder pedal went down, but you know again the rudder pedals are pretty ineffective with no air moving over the rudder, so it's just a habit that I do that. I'm really steering with the brakes. Oh, I tell you what, let's um. I prefer not to have the labels on when I'm not in tower view mode. Um, okay, we're trying to go west and then south. Where is, uh... Alright, well, we'll need to... I don't want to cross over that little grass median, although I very easily could. I don't, however, mind cross, cro crossing over that little service truck. Or striking wingtips with our cargo jet friend here, but... That's fine. We make it past. Oh yeah, plenty of room. Plenty of room. Uh, so what is that? That's number five one four Delta Victor. Truck. Yeah. Okay. There we go. Yeah, I think he saw, he saw us going north and was like, I think this dude's lost. I wasn't. I was just looking for the entrance to get onto uh, Echo here. Yeah, that's what I figured good fictions. <laughs> Um, let's 
see. This should be Tango then. Echo goes to the runway. <laughs> Desert Fox is with us. Loves winter simming. Delta Victor contacts Boston Center. 134.7. Good day and good luck. All right, 34.7, 514.4 Delta Victor. Thank you. You too. Well, the good day part. <laughs> he doesn't need good luck. I get, well, maybe he does need good luck. I don't know. Uh, so 34.7. And uh, so it looks like there's the hold short for the runway. That's the ILS hold short. Well, it, I think we might need to hold short on the ILS line here. So there's a second hold short that's your visual hold short, and there's ILS hold short here. But because of the conditions, I think we're going to kind of just sit right here. Let's um, let's let's do our quick run up. We'll alert flight attendants. Flight attendants will prepare cabin for departure. Towels can go into trail, which I think I've done. Uh, let's uh, set manifold to 30. American 832, heavy to set There's Mr. Sheed. 3000, American 832, heavy. Jump to 101, Boston Center, wind 03015, running 9 clear takeoff. Props down and up three times. Let's go left Magneto down one. And back, listen to them resync. Left Magneto down two. Back up, listen to them resync. Right Magneto down one. Listen to them resync. Right Magneto down two. You can see the RPMs go slightly out of sync, but they come back up. Okay. And hydro pressure is good. On the Bradley 6, by the way, 328 is the heading to fly. Didn't really talk about that. 328 and 4,000. Hello, I'm sorry, where are you? Bradley, Bravo, Victor, Yankee. Uh, Beverly, okay. Uh, I'll have your, I'll have your request in just a moment. You just want to go VFR, is that correct? Aver. Okay, are you ready to taxi now? Aver. Desert Fox is asking about Magnetos. Yeah, we'll talk about that in just a second, but yeah, more, more or less essentially. Let's see. And so you got two Fox sets for each Delta. engine, Cross and before you go, you want to make sure that each one operates independently, so that you know you're not down to your last set. Down to your last set, you don't want to fly. If you got redundant sets, you're good. EBS 1018, heavy Boston Center, squawk 4715. 4715, EBS 1018. Number, right out to Victor, Boston Center, good evening, you ready? 5 4 Delta Victor, affirmative. Number 5 4 Delta Victor, wind 350 at 6183, clear for takeoff. Clear for takeoff, 335, 4 Delta Victor. Just about jump in and call him, and he happened to call me, which was awesome. Thank you, Mr. Sheet. Delta 1536, leave the Myers Space clear, let's close, radar service terminated. Anti collision lights on, landing lights on, landing lights on taxi lights off, pito heat can come on. Fuel pumps can come on. Uh, November 123, sorry, I disconnect again. Uh, any instructions from you? Number 123, I think you may have connected as an observer um, or try a different server. I don't see you online. Uh, November 123, uh, can I contact you the, uh, the New York uh, frequency? American 832 heavy, turn right heading 010, turn the localizer. 
Alright, so here we go. Left heading 160. Left 160, 4, 7, 1, 0, 8. Oh, we're shot. Let's get lined up, get the tailwind locked. Tension pressure's all looking good. Tailwheel's locked. Take off set. Tail goes flying. Rest of the air airplane goes flying. Gear can come up. And we'll try and maintain that 328. Well, there's our moderate turbulence. All right, so there's 400 feet. So at 400, we can go ahead and get flaps in. Set 25 and 40. Pilot report from moderate turbulence. We've been kind of getting around. Uh, 514 out to Victor's 1,600 going to 4,000. Alright, 050. Right, zero, zero. We are able to direct Gardner now. We'll go direct there and 9,000. 514 out to Victor. Twenty-five and forty flaps are up. We're gonna get the nose down and get up to that one hundred and ten knot climb. We can get the. Uh, Fuel pumps off. Yeah, so Desert Fox, the uh, short answer to your question is you, you fly with a redundant set for safety. But you, um, you test them independently on the ground first just to make sure that both are working. Again, if you were to test them short of the runway and find that one set is not working and you're down to your last set before you leave the ground, then that would be a, a good reason not to go. Uh, so we're direct. Direct Gardener now. We're climbing at 110. 25 and 40. And everything going okay. Alright, we're going to get the deviation out of the way right now. Center 5 and 4 Delta Victor, are we able to deviate 30 degrees left for weather? Okay, uh, left 30 degrees and we'll advise when we're direct Gardner 5 and 4 Delta Victor. 
I bought the center November 146 Charlie up on the ground at Beverly Hills. Uh, I have parts and target. Bottom bus. And that's not that bad a, uh, not that bad. We had that big tall, tall cloud there. You can assume might be a thunderstorm or whatever. Uh, we are picking up a little bit of icing. We can see it. We can see the little diagram over here. Is that on your screen or is that too off of the left edge of your screen? Yeah, it's right, right here. So that would substitute for, oh, we're starting to see a little bit of icing. Nothing is nothing is uh, blue or orange yet, so the amount of icing is trace. So, uh, oh. yeah, it's hard to see what is up there. Um, but it's a little it's a little plug-in that substitutes for the inability to see icing build up on the windshield. So, nice little nice little add-on to kind of compensate for you know one of X-Plan's limitations. Yeah, I wish just Desert Fox says I wish there was one that uh, that used the plane's geometry. Yeah, no, I know that's a, a neat little plug-in, but it, it is kind of rudimentary. And so, so what were we through when that started happening? We started happening maybe when we were through about uh, 3,500. Boston Center, November 123. So, you will continue to support me. Is that correct? Thank you, Rip. All right, Thank so. Thank you. Cross Culverstone, the 12,200 on the Skyway, 28,24. Thank you, American 832. Have a good day. Ground point 9, have a good one, American 832. So, Desert Fox is, if you use Active Sky, which I do, do you set? AXP to Skyscape's recommended setting or the global static depiction? I have no idea. I, I, I use whatever settings it defaulted to and I didn't adjust them. <laughs> it's, it's sort of neutering one of ASXP's integral features, which is that localized weather engine. It's a good question. I haven't really looked into it. Novelist propagations here. It's a good question, Desert Fox. I mean, it, there might be some tink some settings I need to tinker with. I feel like it's working working out pretty well, just with whatever settings it, it ran stock with. Did that icing go away? No, it's still there. Okay, so we'll report some trace icing. And uh, what is our outside air temp? Yeah, right about negative 10. Okay, number, I think it's 2939, you're number one in Beverly, let me know when you're ready. 539 is ready, copy. All right, let's, get, let's go ahead and get back to... Uh, 539, Clinton, the Nasdaq Airport, via Rainer Vickers, Marconi, Lima Fox, and Victor, then direct, climb and maintain at 2,000, expect 5,000, once events at the departure, squawk 4735. And is that icing? It's, yeah, I think that icing went away on its own, so I didn't need to use the boots. So we'll, we'll call it icing between uh, 35 and 65. Gotta get a uh, gotta get a word into him. Let him know we're back direct to Gardner. Delta 6025, turn right heading 030, turn right, the local yeah, so we got, two, we got 
two things to say to him. One would be that we're back direct to Gardner. And two would be that we had icing between 35 and 65 uh, at uh, outside air temps, negative 10. <laughs> as usual, he's busy as all get out. Center 5 and 4 Delta Victor's direct gardener now. We also had some trace icing, 3,500 to 6,500 at negative 10 temps. Center 5, 1, 4 Delta Victor, thanks. So, so what was the last part there, negative 1? Uh, negative 1, 0 on the temperature. Thank you. We owe some raffle tickets to anomalous propagation. Get those taken care of. I am st I am still hand flying this, by the way. We got established at our cruise altitude and. Get the navigation going. We'll, uh, hand the controls over to Otto and uh, catch up with some of that stuff. Talk about some of the ongoing raffles that we've run on this channel so that those of you who are new can uh, get a sense of what goes on around here. The mayhem and shenanigans. <laughs> Oh, uh, anomalous, yeah, and, and, and the thing to know is, it's fine, you can put them in whenever. Uh, it will not deduct your points until I essentially acknowledge to it that I've completed the action. Um, you can use those rewards on Twitch to do just about anything. Like, I could charge you 300 points if you... You know, if, if I wanted to charge 300 points to make me sing Old MacDonald, I could do that. And then I would have to actually perform the action, and then I would have to acknowledge to Twitch that I had did what you requested and go ahead and deduct your points or whatever. So on this channel, I just use that as the uh, as the raffle ticket redemption, but in, in the same vein, it, it does make me acknowledge that I've done whatever I, did, I said I would do in order to deduct the points. So it keeps that cue for me, and if you put it in at a time when I'm busy, I'll just get to it when I get to it. A lot of times I get to them after I've closed the stream up, so. Not a big deal. You should, uh, shouldn't hesitate to redeem them whenever you'd like. All right, so we're stable at 9,000. I'm going to pull the power now. Yeah, there you go, Rob. I'll get to that. <laughs> Rob knows. Rob, Rob will just put them in whenever. And, uh, you, you know, you all know that I'll get to him when I get to it. Red Warhawk does the same. Okay. I'll explain what's going on with the raffle ticket thing here in just a moment. For those of you new to the channel, just bear with me as I get the power down to 23 and 34. Words direct to Gardner. I'm just going to spin this until it centers. It doesn't matter what it centers on, just where, wherever it happens to center, that's where, that's the radial that we are following into Gardner right now. There we are. Back. <laughs> if you've just been told to join the localizer, then no. Alright, so there we are. Stable at 9,000. And uh, on that track, let's go ahead and hand this over to Auto. Autopilot on. Nav mode and level. We're 22 miles from Gardner. Tracking inbound on whatever radio. Looks like a, oh, looks like a 060 exactly, but that doesn't have to be necessarily. Just whatever you wind up on, center it and track that in. He had some doozies earlier. Yeah, there's one particular newer pilot that's on that I've dealt with before, and he, the, the, the guy's trying his best, so I'm, I'm trying not to... Trying to have patience when I encounter him. 
but I know he's he's a handful. But you know he's doing his best. And, sh and she she is is more than equipped with uh, the skill and the patience to uh, do what he has to do. All right, I think we got it. Let's go ahead and run through the. Boston, uh, Sandra, number one, two, three. Do I need to change my heading? Let's see. No. We got those off. Uh, control 95, the sediment, take 9,000. Get the radio altimeter set to 10x. Uh, maintain 1, 7,000, Providence altimeter, 2, 9, Get the mix to uh, lean. Maintain 1, 7,000, 3, 2, 0, bro. Get the, uh, the manifold pressure uh, back up to 34. Uh, Seatbelt signs can come off. And I think we're good. Uh, let me do a real quick run through of the fuel tanks. Okay, the right, the left main's still a little heavier, so I'm gonna run both engines on the left main just for a few minutes here. Run both tanks on the left main and we'll rebalance the mains and then we'll switch everything over to the uh, offices here in just a minute. Ladies and gentlemen, we've reached our cruise altitude of 9,000 feet and we have turned off the fastened seatbelt signs. Your cabin crew is going to come around shortly with a fine selection of Red Bull products and main lobster. So relax and enjoy the flight. All right, guys. So we'll get to the raffle ticket thing in just a moment. Actually, we'll des let's describe the raffle now. Just for those of you who are new to the channel, on this uh, on this channel we run two ongoing raffles. The uh, first of them being the Twitch Alphabets points raffle that uh, we've we've seen a few of our viewers redeem points into, and I'm going to go ahead and make those. Uh, redemptions here in just a couple of moments. But the way that raffle works is that you can cash in those Twitch Alphabets points, those Twitch channel points that you see there at the bottom of the chat panel. You've got the Alphabet serial icon, you get a button next to it tells you how many of those points you have. If you save up for 1,000 points, you can cash those in for an entry into our monthly Alphabets raffle. If you shoot for 5,000, you save up for 5,000 points, which might not be a bad strategy because you get six entries for the price of five if you redeem them all at once. And that next drawing is not till the end of December. December the 29th, I think, is the day. The last Wednesday in December is when we are going to make that drawing. So uh, you can save up for 5,000, get six entries in for the price of five. You can put them in 1,000 at a time if you prefer. But uh, that's raffle number one. Raffle number two you get an entry into by being the closest predictor to the vertical descent rate upon touchdown when we uh, when we get down to our destination. We'll be established in the pattern or on the approach. We'll get those predictions from you. Don't put them into the chat just yet, but when we get there, we'll get those. And the closest predictor, uh, either above or below the actual descent rate upon touchdown, we'll get an entry into that second raffle. And again, we'll pull those winners on the same day, on the 29th. You do that toward the end of every month. If you don't get enough points or if you don't get a, a sex successful prediction in uh, to get an entry into that second raffle, doesn't matter. We will reset all the entries after each drawing and start it all over again for the month of January. Winner, the person whose name comes out of that fishbowl, gets their choice of any one item off of this list, which is the uh, Slant Alpha merch list, and then you can also can choose if you prefer not to have any of my junk, you can uh, you can opt instead for an Amazon.com gift card or an Xplain.org store gift card, $25 values each. This uh, funding for all this stuff comes out of those uh, subscriptions, donations, cheer bits, and merchandise sales, all of that generous support of the stream that you guys do. So thank you for all that sub, and uh, it's, it's that 
stream, that revenue stream that allows us to supply these prizes for our monthly raffles every month. We've also got a special giveaway day uh, set up for New Year's Day. So if you're able to join us on the evening of January 1st, we've got a special giveaway set up for that evening as well. All right, so who do I owe those tickets to since I'm on the topic? Looks like uh, Anomalous Propagation gets six. Whoops. Uh, I guess it works better if I actually use the right commands. Alright, so that's done, and I think I need to look at my navigation plan here real quick. We're doing a 071. Yeah, we're just about over top of that VOR. Let's go ahead and... Pop that into heading mode. Yeah, we just flipped over past it, so we'll pop that into heading mode. Now let's catch a 071 outbound. Looks like we turned a little bit late. So we'll turn a little bit more to the right. However, we're not really direct. We're not really outbound on a 071. We're really just direct to. Uh, direct to that next station. So we don't need to be on the 071. We just need to be on whatever makes us direct. So a 14-4. Alright, good enough. And let's pop it into nav mode. 33, 32 miles and counting down. Again, a 071 is what we would need to be on if we were indeed following this airway. But since we overshot the turn and we're not really following the airway, we're just direct to the next station. We overshot, but now we're direct, and I, I may have exaggerated by how much we overshot. But we overshot, and now it looks like we're kind of on a 074. Which is fine, since we're not really following that Tango airway, we're just direct to the next VOR, and that's, that's fine. That's fine for us to do. Uh, we're, we're facing 070, but we're tracking a 074 radio. Uh, let's just... Yeah, so we got... There we go. So we're all in agreement that we're facing 070, but we're tracking in on the 074. Okay, there were three zero nine four five, so right heading zero nine zero again. Alright, so uh right through zero nine zero for vector three zero nine four five, thank you much. Slide it back up and see if we can catch up with the conversation. Smitty checked in, hey Smitty, what's going on? Red Dragon says, Hey, did you hear about the PMDG news? They said development of the seven three is pretty much on hold. They don't have a release date out for it yet. Yeah, and it's not surprising. Every sim update that a Sobo releases breaks so much stuff that it's got to be hugely, hugely frustrating to be a developer for that sim. When every every sim update that comes out, you got to go back and fix stuff that that was already working. <laughs> You're developing for a platform that is that big of a moving target. I'm sure that that's extremely frustrating. Red Bull, what's a pomegranate Red Bull? Okay. Let's see if I've got one in the fridge here. Uh, just went into some cloud cover and uh, what's the OATs? 
Almost negative 20. We probably okay with icing. I'm told that it's really negative 10 to 10 that you have to worry. But uh, since we're in the thick of the moisture, we'll go ahead and pop the anti-icing on. All right, now. The other thing, let's go back to the specs here. Uh, we filed an appropriate IFR flight plan routing based on weather. We deviated correctly, including requesting the deviation and advising its completion. We've done that. We've provided a prior rep. Uh, we are going to do a uh, failure. I'm, I'm going to kind of hold on to that for a little bit. Uh, and then we're going to fly an approach into Bar Harbor and cancel IFR. So to the approach into Bar Harbor will definitely happen. The cancel IFR will definitely happen once we get down successfully. So it's this, this simulated failure that we have to arrange. And uh, we're going to do a failure that will definitely change the way we have to navigate, but it will not make us have to declare an emergency. So we'll get, get that. We'll hold on. I'm going to keep that one in my pocket. How I plan to handle that. Desert Foxes. Oh, geez. Don't get uh, P3D stuff. What's its future? It's really, it's just FSX. It's uh, kind of a dead end. Yeah, I, I, I think... Um, I think right now it's for me. Oh, that was anomalous. It said earlier. I got my hopes up for PMDG because I don't want to sink more money into P3D. Yeah, for me it's X plane and uh, flights in 2020 going forward for sure. Yeah, every sim says Desert Fox. Every sim at this point has realistic aircraft available for it. I agree. And then Pick a Five String says on the other side of the coin, Phoenix re uh, released a video, hour long in game video of the A320's electrical system and how they coded it. <laughs> You're going to do a, a hydraulic? No, we are not going to do a hydraulic failure, Desert Fox. Yeah, Eric says uh, Rob Rendazzo had a uh, good extensive interview on Flying Fabio's Twitch stream today. I saw about this. I heard about that. I didn't see it. I, I uh, saw a screenshot of it while I was at work. I uh, meant to watch it on the way home and then wound up on a work call on the way home. And three, of course. <laughs> yeah, and the beautiful thing, Eric, we were talking about, and I think it was, I can't remember whose Discord it was, maybe, um, Melvin Leroy's was that in the background of his interview was his DC-3, his personal DC-3. And uh, somebody noted that it's up for sale on, uh, I forget what website it was. And so we were, we were trying to pull the money together. <laughs> yeah, in that, in that Pan Am livery. Sim update 7 really messed up the software developer kit, says good fixes. Yeah, I, that the sim, the, the sim as a whole is, is such a moving target. I, I know it's going to be frustrating. Right, after... I have Adis Bravo, expect to runway 4 right approach, Jibu number 0. After Manchester, uh, I really should have the next one up the line tune that I probably did not, I don't think. That's going to be Kennebunk 117.1. Let's just tune it on NAV2 just to see if we already are receiving it. Seventeen one. yeah, we are. Okay, that's good. 58 miles. So, so once we pass over Manchester, we're going to turn, again, we're not following that airway, so we don't have to worry about the specific radio per se, but that gives us a good target to shoot for in the turn at least. So we'll do that, turn to about a zero six zero. 
Uh, looks like we're correcting about three or four degrees to the right for wind right now, so we'll plan on doing the same. And uh, and then we'll get ourselves tuned in to Kennebunk. And we've still got kind of a ways to go. Uh, doesn't really. So after Augusta, we got a 50 mile leg up to uh, to Bangor. So I guess once we get headed toward Augusta, we can start our approach briefing. I think we're okay until then. Anyway, 060 after Manchester. There's a pick of five string says BMDG struggling because they're, they've been developing for P3D and FSX for 15 years, which have been two very stable and static platforms. Yeah, that's that's true. I think in particular the way that this platform has been, well, not, not this platform, this is X-Plane, uh, but the way that Microsoft Lights in 2020 has been updating has been particularly frustrating just because of the number of things that break from one update to the next. It's, 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 it's kind of been... <laughs> impressive is the wrong word, but surprising. <laughs> Four seven one zero eleven ninety one. Uh, so Desert Fox says says the same thing happens in DCS. Yeah. Sounds I guess it's up. Uh, yeah, it's beyond time to check on the fuel balance. And yeah, I've, I've done it again. I've screwed up the fuel balance yet again. Let's get the uh, let's get the plane back over into the right mains. We're going to run the right main down to just above 50. Yeah, the failure might be uh, an empty fuel tank. <laughs> yeah, Eric says Flight Sim 2020 is a little over a year old. The other simulators are much more developed. Indeed, and that's true, Eric. Um, that's true, but... Uh, it still just seems like there's a quite a bit of moving target still. It's, dying of old age is probably a better description than Desert Fox. Yeah. Kind of hits home. <laughs> Alright, so we're popping into Heading Moon here. Let's make a uh, left turn. 060 as we pass the VOR. We're going to pop 17-1 into the upper radio, 17, and, uh, 1, just center it on, again, we're not tracking the airway, so we can do this, where we can just center it on whatever centers, track that. What's the, what's the timing here? We're going from... Uh, basically 10 minutes. So it burns 25 gallons every 15 minutes. And we're going to try and burn down to about 54. And it's at 67. 68. So maybe 15... 15 or so gallons, so about 10 minutes. A seat warmer failure? <laughs> Galley power failure? All these things could fail. Pentagon with the resub. We were talking about the generous support of the subscriptions earlier. Thank you guys. So much for that. Yeah, alright, so I guess I'll talk about it now. Once we get onto the approach... What we'll do... This doesn't say DME required, does it? It does not. 
Follow you another King Airliner off Weaver. Are we the setting beat arrival or awaiting your instruction? Anyway. Hey, wait. Hey, from King uh King Airliner off Weaver. Jetlo 2989, Jetlo 310. Don't have any other reference points, but it doesn't say DME required. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna simulate a DME failure. Okay, set us that point for two minutes. I'll be right back in two minutes, I think. Just means that we would uh basically need to time ourselves from Becra since there's no other references and no uh, no markers or anything no marker beacons so we'll have to time it from Becra 6.4 10.4 11.1, 11 11.5, 11 12 and a half. Yeah, so 13 and a half to one here. So 12 and a half miles. So we basically double this, right? Minutes and seconds. We're going to be about 90 knots, about eight minutes from Becra. Well, we actually will know the final approach fix because we'll know that at the point that we cross 2100 established, we'll at we'll final approach fix, so we can we can time it from that. No, it won't be a local approach. It'll be ILS because we'll have a uh, we'll have a localizer and a glide slope, but we don't have the DME. So, established on glide slope at 2100 is the final approach fix, and we can. Uh, at, at 90 knots, between 60 and 90 will be about 75. Well, we'll, now we'll do 90. 90 is a... Uh, actually, we do about 70... 70 so, so, yeah, so it's going to be about five minutes. Five minutes from the final approach fix. So, yeah, we're going to do it without the ME. Slant uniform. Slant uniform approach. Do the windscreen failure, then you have to squint for the whole approach. Yeah, that's what put the put the goggles on. <laughs> fun, fun, fun. And we'll we're 32 miles out from where are we? Do I buy Red Bull by the case? Pick a five string. I do actually. I buy it from Sam's Club. Alright, where are we? We're going into Manchester, or are we going into, uh, Kennebuck? I think we're going into Kennebuck now, 17-1. Yeah, we are. Let's tune the next one just to have it. So, after Kennebuck, we're going eastbound on a 081 to Sappy, and then Sappy up to Augusta 1495. So, 1495 would be the next one that we're, uh, Sorry, you stepped away there. Uh, maintaining 8,000, 30, go tango. 1495. Delta 56 cross phase, the item, maintain 8,000, LaGuardia, altimeter, 2989. 1495, okay, and we do not have that Augusta VOR in yet. Fox 0, Leonard, 2018, direct, uh, Center five one four Delta Victor stepping away for five. Thank you. All right, guys, be right back. Five eighty four, welcome to Boston. Taxi to runway eight three three, right hold short, runway four left. Repeat five eighty four. 
Taxi down to runway 33 right, hold short, runway 4 left. Alright, uh, taxi down to right, hold short, 4 left, Fedex 554. Number 320, Bravo, descend to maintain 4000. 720, Bravo. Alright, Papa Charlie Alpha 460, what's your call sign again? I'm sorry. Papa Charlie Alpha 460, what is your call sign again? At Pacific Airlines 460. Pacific 460, thank you. Descend via the Roebuck 3 arrival, runway 4 right, ball south, 2986. Descend via the Roebuck 3, Roebuck 3 arrival for runway 4 right, uh, Timothy 2986. Contact uh, New York Approach 120.8, have a good night. 120.8, King Air, and I don't know if we have a good night. Delta 1388, cross Lolly and maintain, but I want 200. Cross Lolly and 200, Delta 1388. Delta 1288, contact New York Approach 120.8, have a good night. 120.8, at least you have a good night. Delta 990, turn left heading 070, vectors for sequencing. 070, Delta 940, wind 041, so I've got 2 running 4 right, clear the land. Clear the land, runway 4 right, jet 940. Number 320, Bravo, from that heading, join the localizer. Join the localizer, 320, Bravo. Delta 8888, wind 040, 17, got 2 running 4, crush running down, clear for takeoff. 9, clear for takeoff, 8888. heavy, cross running 4 left, turn left on November. Cross 4 left, left on November, for the cross 4. Number 320, Bravo, 4 miles from Winnie, maintain 4,000 until established on the localizer, clear to LS, running 4 right approach. Maintain 4,000 until established on the localizer, clear to LS, 4 right, 320, Bravo. Jumbo 1570, maintain 300 knots or greater for spacing. 300 knots or greater for spacing, Jumbo 1570. Alright, back with you guys. 220. Check in with him when we get a chance. Right now, let's uh, check on our fuel balance. Alright, we're going to run the right main for just another couple seconds. While we sync our headings, we're about 2 to 3 degrees shy of 060. Alright, so those are all in sync now. Let's. Okay, close enough. I'm not going to take any chances. I'm going to go ahead and just switch into the aux tanks. Right engine to the right aux. Iowa Scotsman's checked in just in time to watch my fuel rebalancing efforts. Alright, uh, so left engine's in left aux. Right engine's in right aux. The mains are eh, close to being balanced. And the uh, aux has got plenty of fuel, so we'll stick with that. I'm going to go ahead and check back in with uh, Sheed, let him know that we're back on. And that we do need to... Okay, we are receiving that next VOR up the line now. Uh, now, are we, in this case, are we on a specific airway or are we just direct? We actually are. We have to be on a specific radial this time because we're going after this point sappy, so... Going after this point zero eight one, and then I'll show you how to figure out when we're at Sappy as well. Going to cross reference two radials. Don't get to do that too much. But anyway, zero eight one after Kennebunk on one seventeen one. If you want to see this uh, this this flight from the controller's point of view, by the way, the, our controller is streaming as well, kind of uh, infamously 
that on Vatsim. He is is known as Sheed, S-H-3-E-D, Sierra Hotel 3 Echo Delta. So twitch.tv slash and then what I just said. Center 5 and 4 out the Victor's back. Valkyrie has been uh, kind enough to put the link up, and of course the furry co-pilot always gets really excited when Rob Valkyrie arrives. So. Of course, I know you, you've been here for a while. We got those raffle tickets in for you a little while ago. I guess that was the first thing that you actually said in the chat today. But well, we're always happy to have you here, Rob. You know that. <laughs> By the way, don't need the Bradley diagram, don't need the Bradley 6. And uh, there's no airport diagram at kind of, um, at uh, Bar Harbor. So we're just going to assume that this is the ramp that we're going to taxi to. We, this may end up being a circling approach, too. Last time I checked, the winds were favoring one by four. Don't leave this channel. You can watch both, but don't leave this one. You know what? I mean, surely so. Bahaba, of course, uh, Desert Fox. Yeah, I know. I've been, uh, I've been neglecting the correct pronunciation of the place. And we're gonna follow there from Vatsels. Thank you so much. Appreciate you being here. Uh, so this is for the first time tonight. We're not simply direct to the next VOR. We're, we're going to have to track a specific radio outbound. So we'll get ready to do a 081. I'm going to go ahead and set the target heading to that. Plus a little more because I tend to overshoot the turns a little bit. But 081 is what we'll set on the. Uh, set on the radial. We can see we're 2.5 miles away, but we're also at 9,000 feet. We're about a mile and a half above the VOR, so this isn't going to count down to zero. We're, well, let's put it this way. We're a mile and a half above sea level at 9,000 feet. We may not be a mile and a half above ground level, but probably close to it. The terrain's pretty flat up here. Desert Fox says, your stream and sheet stream are pretty well synchronized latency-wise, says Desert Fox. That may come and that may be different for for each person, but for you right now, that's kind of a cool effect, I'm sure. All right, let's get ready to make this turn. As the VOR starts to pass, it goes, there it goes. Let's go into heading mode now. We're gonna track outbound on a 081. Other left, how many lefts are there? So there's a 080, there's a 081. And uh, let's. Okay, it is starting to come back in, so that's good. I did turn. Uh, I turned a little late, but I overshot the heading on purpose just so that we would come back into it. And uh, we'll go ahead and per uh, pop it back into nav mode and let auto shake that out for us. Now, there's two ways to know when we're at that point. Which whose name I named? I didn't remember. Sappy. Okay. We're going zero eight one until Sappy. The cheating way is that Sky Vector tells us that's a twenty seven mile leg. <laughs> so we can simply fly outbound until that's twenty seven. Actually, we'll fly outbound until it's twenty six, and then we'll start our turn to get on the new. Uh, to get on the new airway. The other way, though, is that we know this sappy point is along this airway, this Victor 268, which comes in at a 213 to Augusta. So 114.95 and 213 
114.95 already tuned in to NAV2 and we can flip the DME over and see that it, we are receiving it. We also can tell that we're receiving it because we've got the two, two flag. We don't have a, a glide slope associated, but we do have a deviated needle, meaning that we do have course information on that VOR. And we said it's a 213 that we're going to be out in, inbound on, but that means that we're following that radio in a 033 direction. So we'll set a 033. <clears throat> now it's telling us. It's telling us that we need to correct to the right to get on that. Why is it telling us that? Well, it's telling us that because we're not on that airway, we're left of it. It's telling us we need to correct to the right to get on that airway, and of course that's the case because we are left of that airway now. Our chart tells us that. We're down here coming in this way. All that NAV2 tells us, I mean, this NAV, these, these old school radios, they don't know anything about what this total path plan is. All it knows is we've got this station tuned in here, and we've got this radial dialed in here, so it's going to attempt to navigate us to this line, which I didn't draw that straight. But right now, we're over here somewhere. And it's telling us that if we're headed to this station, we need to correct to the right to get on that airway. Well, of course we do. We're going to correct to the right indeed, but we're going to correct to the right on this path. It doesn't know that, but that's what we're going to do. As we get closer in, as we get closer in, As we are almost on that path, that needle down there on that NAV2 is going to go from fully left deviated. Oh, I'm sorry, shoot, do it in the wrong direction. Ignore that. It's going to go from fully right deviated to slightly right deviated. And then eventually, as we join that point Sappy, both our both our current radial of 081 off of Kennebunk and our 213 into into um, whatever that is, Augusta. So both the 081 off of Kennebunk and the 213 into Augusta will be centered at the same time, and that's what an intersection means. It's the intersection of two specific radials off of two different VORs. We'll watch that in action. Again, right now, NAV2 says we need to correct to the right. And again, we're cheating because we know it's going to happen at 27 miles. So it's a good cross-reference to have. So it's a good cross-reference to have is if you know that distance. And of course later we're going to simulate what happens if you don't have DME. Yeah, if pick a five string is correct. In fairness, if you were doing this on a paper chart, you'd measure it. That's true. That's true. Uh, and the other thing is, um, the VOR rings, the, the, the compass roses around the VOR are depicted as 10 miles, just for scale. So you can kind of go 10, if that's 10, then that's probably 20, and then almost another one, which is almost 30. <laughs> Back to 170, 
But yeah, you're correct. Obviously, you'd have other ways to determine the distance from the chart, chart being to scale, of course. But yeah, it, 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 nope. and, and now you can see, as we're getting close to that point, we're 22 miles. So another five miles is when we're going to make the turn. You can see the needle has swung down, and it is almost centered. So that's the true definition of an intersection. We're going to be outbound on the 081, and it's going to line up with inbound on the 031. I think it was 031, 033, whatever it was. 033. Let's make sure I dialed 031, 033, and not 031. I did. Okay, good. And real quick, let's just make sure, okay, we're pointed at a uh, 080 exactly, that matches, that now matches also, uh, we're coming up on a Mazda. Desert, uh, Desert Fox has a good question. I believe I know the answer to you. I believe I know the answer to you. I don't really. Uh, okay, so here we, call, we, here we are. We're going to turn to that 030. Uh, that means we'll pop this... 030-ish, obviously. Go ahead and pop it into heading mode. And then we'll begin tracking. Uh, we don't have a swap button like we would in a fancy schmancy radio, so we'll have to swap it manually here. But, uh... 1495 and 033. And hopefully we're close to being uh, right on that. We'll... 30... One, two, and three. Oh, hush. Nav mode. Okay, we're tracking inbound. Oh, we made that turn pretty accurately, actually. Is it a rail at the top and bottom and side so they don't interfere? Yeah, you know what? They're larger behind the bulkhead. That's it. Yeah, it, it's it's a good question, Desert Fox. Now that you say that, I think I think feel like I had in my head a picture of what it would look like and I was going to draw it for you, but you're right it, what I was about to draw wouldn't explain how the sideways one would work, so I don't know <laughs> I don't know alright, so where are we now guys? we are inbound to Augusta on this 213 and then we're going to be outbound of, of, of Augusta on approximately a 069. But again, at that point, we're not on a specific radial. We're just going to be outbound on whatever. Okay, planes making a heading correction there. Shadows were moving. Just want to make sure. Okay, we're good. All right, so after Augusta, zero. F Whoops. Zero six niner. Fifty miles. Fourteen eight is what we'll tune in. Fourteen eight and uh, zero six niner. And we are, in fact, receiving that already, 81 miles away, which is good. Uh, 069er, so we'll run it up to 70 and then go back one notch, which is either there or there. We'll go there, I guess. I don't know. It doesn't really matter. Uh, 
727 for you guys an answer, but yeah, I kind of need to picture it as to how those how they would work without hitting each other. I'm sure, I'm sure Desert Fox. I'm sure if you if you if you uh, search around, I'm sure you can find one. But uh, but yeah, these are definitely the older school style with that that's kind of swing from that pivot point. That was one of the systems I worked on in the Air Forces, 727. So here's what, I mean, here's what I kind of envision. How well I would draw. So if, you, if you're looking at it in this direction, and the, the gauge is here, I'm assuming that, like, there's a point, there's a pivot point way back here. And then that swings up and down. And then within... Within the, the lateral confines of that is the same thing... That way, that, that, that pivots that way. Again, if the looker's looking this way. That's that's kind of what I envision. And I think that works. If this is a bigger, if this one's a bigger triangle than this one, I think it works without them hitting each other. <laughs> that's my guess, Desert Fox, but again... I, I'm with you on the magic and sorcery answer. I, I think I'm just sticking with that. <laughs> yeah, Rob, we're going to hang that one up on the fridge for sure. Rob says, talented, not only a terrific streamer, but uh, artist as well. Yeah, well... The magic and artistry of stick figures. <laughs> Is my mic a little overdriven today, guys? I'm sorry. I did. I did recalibrate. Uh, I did recalibrate um, stuff after I rehooked it all up after we got back from. ZDC Live, so if sound levels are a bit off, then I apologize. Oh, it was good, says Rob? Okay. Back where it was. It was sounding good, it was not clipping. Okay, good. That's good enough. The levels were showing a little higher than what I'm used to seeing, but if it's, it was, if it's not uh, it's not distorting at all, then I won't worry about it. Oh my goodness. We've got the raid coming in from 757 Spy. Thank you so much, Dave. I always appreciate your support. Doing some DC-3 flying. We were going to fly the Mooney up here in the Boston area, but uh, we got some icing warnings up here. We know the Mooney's not anti-icing equipped. We're doing the Boston Virtual ARTCC Wings Over New England IFR-22. And that one specifically says you have to be able to deal with weather, so I figured flying into icing with a non-icing, anti-icing equipped plane would probably fail me instantly on the uh, on the rating. So here we are in the DC-3. Now it looks like things are starting to clear up a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and turn the anti-icing boots off. But yeah, we were, we were dealing with some pretty bad precip earlier on. We got the uh, we got Foghorn. Stopped in with the follow. Thank you so much for that. We appreciate it. Yeah, guys, real quick. There she is. It's the DC-3. Custom livery. It's the AeroWorks DC-3 for X-Plane 11. Nice ortho 4 XP scenery up here, though, as we are flying to Bahaba in uh, beautiful Maine, coastal Maine. And it's the IFR-22 for the Boston Virtual ARTCC Wings Over New England training flights. With a gift sub going out to the 727 Freak. And a, and a thank you for your service, I'm sure. Yeah, that's the AeroWorks Freeware DC3, and it's fantastic. I fly a ton of this plane, says uh, Luke Haley says. How is it? 
Yeah, going to Bar Harbor. Noah Pierce is uh, asking about that. Yep. Guys, thanks so much for joining. Hope that you'll stop in and see us. We fly for you typically Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 7 p.m. Eastern. The schedule's going to be a little bit off this week. Um, But, uh, but yeah, man, thanks so much, guys, for being here. I know 727 Freak is from this way as well, if I remember correctly. So, uh... All right, guys, I think it's going to be time to start briefing our arrival. So, bear with me if I'm not... Extremely attentive to the chat as we get set up for this. So we're, after Augusta, we're going to get established on a uh, a 069 or thereabouts, but it's going to be whatever gets us direct to Bangor on 1148. And 14 miles. I think it's time. Let's go ahead and start briefing the uh, weather conditions there. Let's go ahead over into X Pilot and we'll do dot meter K B H B. Zero two zero thirteen. Six statute miles, light snow and mist, scattered at thirty six hundred. So the cloud cover is going to be high enough. It shouldn't be a factor. Overcast at forty four. Minus seven. Nice cold day up there. Two niner, niner five, I believe, is what that says. Okay, so zero two zero. So, and the only ILS we have is the ILS to two two, which means we're going to need to uh, fly the ILS to two two and then circle the runway four if we want the uh, runway that's most favorable to the wind conditions. So going to be a tricky one and we are going to simulate that our DME has gone out so we're going to five one four delta victor bangor on seven or two nine or nine or nine two triple nine or five four delta victor american 21 18 uh what's your airspeed now i got two ten down for 20 all right so we're going to slow i've learned my lesson i'm going to slowly advance this to two nine 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 because the plane is going to then automatically descend and recapture that nine thousand foot altitude so we're going to just very slowly advance that up to 2 triple nine. I didn't hear a greater range Got one more notch to go or two? Yeah, there we go. All right, so that's done now. And uh, nine more miles, and then we're north and east from, from uh, Augusta up to Bangor, and then we'll let... Mr. Sheed know what we want to do as far as our approach goes. Again, we've got an RNAV. We've got some RNAV approaches, but we're doing this as, all, all the, as though we are not RNAV equipped in this plane. So the only approach that we've got to choose from is the ILS-22. We have to uh, have to fly it as a circle. I kind of lost my train of thought. So it, it is the uh, it is the CH yoke that I use. And, and yeah, it's a little jittery and old. I do have a honeycomb alpha in the box over here. I haven't unpacked it yet because I don't have a, a throttle for it. I don't have the Bravo. My CH has a built-in throttle mix and prop yoke uh, control. But uh, if I were to switch yokes right now, I wouldn't really have a... Uh, wouldn't really have a means to work those controls. So, we'll get there. Just use the CH as a throttle on the alpha yoke. Uh, I don't think I've got enough space on the desk to do it that way, but yeah, I, cons I consider like hacking it <laughs> vertically. I don't know. I'm not that handy with that kind of stuff. But yeah, no, I, I thought about that. I thought about that. I, I, think, for, I think for Christmas we will... Uh, People have a solution. <laughs> I think we'll have a solution. Sorry, one thing to pop of off the center, clear to Providence Airport and filed. 
Whoops, that's not what I meant to turn off. Uh, so let's... Alright, uh, so let's get ready. We're going to make our turn. Over Augusta to about a 070. Whoops. About a 070. Okay, uh, so there's a 069. I think I turned it a little early, so I'm set, turning to a, a 60 rather than a 70. Yeah, we could pick up a cheaper throttle quadrant, that's for sure. Yeah, there's solutions, but I, I, I just uh, haven't gotten there yet. Haven't, haven't had a chance to go shopping yet. We'll get there. Right now, I'm going to try and start getting ready for this approach, so yeah, bear with me if I'm not super attentive to the chat. So we're going to need to jump in and let uh, center controller know that we have the weather at Bar Harbor. We'll let him know what approach we are requesting, and we're also going to let him know that our DME is no longer working, which is a, we're going to simulate a failure of the DME here. Okay, so we're pretty much on that. Uh, any good bars at the Bar Harbor? 757 Spy asks. I'm sure we'll find one. Alright, so we're. Inbound now, oh, there's the icing warning. Inbound now to Bar or to Bangor, 114.8. Alright, let's pop it into heading mode first of all. Heading mode. We're going to navigate inbound to 114.8 on whatever radio we happen to have wound up on. Doesn't matter what radio, just track that in, whatever one. And 42 and 42 and, and counting down. And I'm just going to tune this. Just going to tune that to nothing. So that we're just going to pretend that, that uh, our DME is no longer working. It really is. But at this point, I'm just, just going to uh, simulate a DME failure. We'll report that into the center controller with our approach request. And when hey, we, we last knew what our position was, it was 40 some odd miles. We're going to cover, we cover about three miles a minute. So that's, what's that, uh, 13 minutes? 916, So right around 9.30 is when we should be crossing that banner VOR. Cross whiteboard at uh, 1,000. 
So yeah, seven two seven for guess is to make it look like flat movement. The uh, the depth of the gauge is about nine inches deep into the panel. Yeah, makes uh, makes sense. We got the sub from Not JK. Thanks so much for that. Again. I hope Slanta can. <laughs> And we want to, so after Bangor we can go, go down to 4,000, or even before Bangor we can go down to 4,000. We're at 9,000, so we got 5,000 to lose, if we lose 1,000 a minute, that's 5 minutes. So about 9.25 we want to start with this end. Good gracious. Start briefing the approach. Frequency and course 1083 and 224. We're off of Bangor. We're going to come down to 4,000 for 30 miles. Established on the localizer. Got the weather. ILS 22 circling 4. Be advised no DME if a DME failure, not an emergency. Five four nothing. Sounds good, American two twenty two turn right heading zero six zero to the localizer. Zero six zero to the localizer, American two twenty two. Delta two ten. It looks like you're off the localizer. Your left heading is zero one zero to seven eighteen four thousand. Zero one zero down to four thousand. Uh, so 1083, 224, no circling instructions. 
Uh, it's up to you, uh, direct from Bangor. Or, yeah, off of Bangor is fine. Okay, off of Bangor, number 5, we're down to Victor, cross the Bangor, VOR, at or above 5,000, cleared ILS, range 2 2 approach at Bar Harbor. Bangor at 5, cleared ILS 2 2 at Bar Harbor, 5, report out to Victor. He's, he is busy, you don't have to vector me. <laughs> okay. So, after banger, 29-6 on a 132, then we'll intercept the localizer. Um, 1083 and 224. We are going to circle. It's not towered, so as soon as we can see the field, we can cancel IFR and do the circling. Um, if we land on four, it's a right-hand turn off. Looks like we'll probably uh, probably have to. We're not going to make this at these turns. We'll roll it past 17 and make the right turn off at the end, or uh, prior to the end, just prior to the end. Uh, if we go missed. Um, Mist is a right turn, direct Bangor, and hold the 4,000. So we'll have to know that if we've circled and go Mist, then we're going to have to make a left turn, direct Bangor. Uh, minimums for the straight in, uh, we're going to have to do it circling. Minimums for the circling for category A is uh, 600. Ladies and gentlemen, we're just about to start our descent into Bar Harbor, so we ask you to return to your seats and fasten your seat belts. Weather there is currently right around 20 degrees with cloudy skies and light snow. The cabin crew is going to come around one last time to collect trash and take care of any last minute needs. Thanks again for flying Slant Alpha Airways. Delta 81, thank you. Expect the ILS. Expect the ILS 4, right? Delta 81. American 222, Tower 1288. Have a good night. Tower 288, American 222. Good night. How are we on? Fuel. Yeah, the mains are still pretty low. I'm going to go ahead and leave it in the oxes for the approach. We're going to go ahead and start a descent down to five. I'm going to let autopilot manage that for now. So let's run over through our approach briefing and again make sure I got everything up. Uh, approach frequency and course set. Missed approach frequency and course set. Missed approach is just the Bangor VOR, and because I don't want to, uh, I don't want to accidentally cheat and uh, tune that and use DME reference. I'm going to not tune that like I normally would on the approach. Uh, minimums we talked about for the circling is 600. Uh, forecast winds, we talked about being favorable to a runway 4 arrival, and it's uh, zero, 2 zero, so it's going to be a slight left to right. And the ceiling at uh, 2,600 or something, I think it was, scattered at 3,600, so we should be okay for cloud cover. Uh, missed approach, we talked about being direct bang, where it would be left, and we talked about the anticipated turnoff route as well. Okay, so I think we're good there, guys. We uh, have done our briefing. We're going to keep it at 
5,000 until we cross over Bangor. After Bangor, we are going to establish ourselves on a 132 outbound for 29 miles. Sir Skidmore is here. So people says if you're cleared for the ILS on a non-towered field, so yeah, what they do is you just you fly the approach, um, and then once you're established on the approach, they will basically say frequency change advisors approved, and you switch over to CTAF and start making calls on the CTAF frequency for the airport that you're X miles out on the ILS, X miles out on the ILS, X miles out on the ILS. Um, VFR traffic is basically bound to sequence to you because there's nothing you can do to, to, to stay out of their way. Um, once you see the field, you can cancel your IFR, and uh, then you're basically with, then you're then you're part of the VFR traffic. But if it's if it's obviously if it's slopped into the point where you you have no visibility, then there won't be any VFR traffic. Uh, we're 6,000, getting close to the time that I said we would be crossing Banger. It kind of looks like the needle wants to twitch and this needle wants to flip, so we need to be ready to turn it out on a 132. Squawk 4740. Yeah, that needle wants to go. This needle's starting to lean over. Getting real close. We don't remember. We're, we're simulating that our DME has failed. So we're kind of just waiting. Okay. It's gone. So we're going to start that turn. 132 is on the chart, 132 and 4,000. Okay, we did cross the VOR at or above 5. So we're good, and we're, now we're good down to 4 because the chart says we can go down to 4 on this leg. I'm going to correct a little extra to the right in order to get back on that 132. That did happen pretty much right at 9.30, which is good. It gives us easy numbers to go by. Uh, 30 miles is about 10 minutes. We can even shallow the descent even really if we want to. We are commencing the approach. Go to mix auto rich. We'll open up the uh, cow flaps a little. Fuel pumps on. Okay, so we're just about established on that. Uh, looks like we need to correct a little bit more left. Oh, I overshot it. That's what happened. Overshot it, but that's okay. We'll come back and get it. No problem. And we're at four. So we'll add some power back in. What I'm going to do. Crack 
We're in heading mode. We're going to keep it in heading mode. We're going to have the Bangor VOR on the NAV-2. I'm just not going to look at the DME. I'm literally holding my hand up so I can't see it. You guys can see it. I won't be able to see it. 14.8. And uh, the ILS frequency we said was a 108.3. Uh, the Bangor, we're going to get NAV 2 tuned to a uh, tuned to a 1.32. Localizer's not yet in yet. It's uh, 1083 and 224. We'll go ahead and get that set. I'm going to just turn that to, since we're not, oh, we are receiving on that. Okay. <laughs> Trying not to look at that. And yeah, we can correct a little bit to the right. And we're at 4,000 until we're established. It does not say anything about no procedure turn here, so that means we do need to do this entry, which is a weird one because we're coming this way. It's ju it's just as easy to go that way as it is that way, but uh, since it does not say no procedure turn, we'd have to go out and then uh, do the loop in. So we'll be ready for that. Alright, I'm going to try not to look at the DME as uh, I saw it. Alright, so we're, we're doing well with the, the tracking of that. Uh, frequency change approved, 5 Port Delta Victor. Uh, so there's there's where we go. We would get a point out for aircraft if there was one. Twenty-two eight, and we think we're probably still about five minutes out. What's my airspeed? Still about five minutes out from where we're going to cross over that localizer. Once we're established, okay, well, all right. During the, uh, during the hold turn, we can go from four to three. And then on the inbound side, we can go to three once we're established down to 21. Auto Rich Cows Trail Tailwheel is uh, locked. Fuel pumps on. And uh, we are ready, ready to commence our approach. And again, not, nothing receiving on that uh, localizer just yet, but we know we're on the right frequency because we did accidentally catch a snippet of that DME earlier. Oops. I'm really trying not to look at it. <laughs>
All right, while we're here, let's do two things. Let's do one last check of the fuel situation. Yeah, the aux tanks are the fuller ones, so that's what we'll stick with. And then let's do one last sink of the headings. We're on a one, two, seven or thereabouts. Okay, localizer is in, glide slope is in. Okay, good. Let that localizer in, glide slope out again. When that localizer starts to move, though, we're going to have to bang a quick left turn onto uh, the outbound side, which is 040. So that's now reading about a 130 on the nose. That's a one, uh, one degree off. And that's about five degrees off. Okay. 129. 129, 129. Uh, when the localizer comes in, we'll turn to the outbound side. We'll descend from four to three. Actually, going to start bringing the power down and bringing the speed down as well. soon as that localizer starts to move, we're coming at it at a 90 degree angle, so as soon as it starts to move, we need to bang that turn to that outbound side. And that is when I will fly the thing for real. We'll kick Otto out of the cockpit and heaven help us, you'll be in my hands. Right, we're below 120, I'm going to add some power back in. That should be moving any second, guys. I said 10 minutes, but it's been every bit of that. Up oh, there it goes. So we'll uh, get established on the outbound localizer. And I'm going to go ahead and cut the autopilot off. Start a descent to three. Go for one minute as the uh, second hand passes the six. Bar Harbor traffic, Douglas 514 Delta Victors in the hold turn outbound on the uh, localizer 2 2 Bar Harbor. Go ahead and get flaps one in and under 120. Again, we're kind of reverse sensing the needle here at this point as well. I'm going to turn right to pull the needle right. So there's our one minute. We're going to go ahead and turn onto the protected side. So even though the hold is a right hold, we got to turn left to stay in it 
from the outbound side of the localizer. Turn back around, reestablish ourselves at 3,000. Getting really slow, by the way. That's my fault. Add some power back in. Still be descending to three. It's a two, two, four, I think it is. So we'll turn it down to 30 degrees left of that. 22, 21, 20, 19 and, ch 19 and change. Okay, there. So 19 and change and coming down to 3,000. Guys can start putting some predictions into the chat in terms of the vertical descent rate upon uh, touchdown. No bot command is necessary here, just a number into the chat. The minus sign is even optional. We know you mean a descent rate either way. So just a number, just like, the, just like Desert Fox did, guys. The closest predictor gets an automatic entry into our December 29th raffle. Winner to receive some Slant Alpha merchandise or $25 Amazon or x -Plane Org Store gift card. Excuse me. Localizer is starting to come back in. I feel like I need to put a little bit more of a correction in to make it happen, so I'm going to do that. Oh, should be at 3,000 also. So, a little altitude deviation there. I don't know if Sheets might be too busy to ding us up on that, but we'll see. <laughs> so that's a pretty bad one, though. That was 300 feet before I realized I was below that 3,000 foot uh, published altitude. So that's a pretty bad one. All right, so there we are on the loke. Glide slope coming down at three, which should happen at uh, 13.5. So we're going to say we're about a 13 mile final. Bar Harbor traffic, Douglas 514 Delta Victor's ILS 22, 13 mile final. We're going to circle to runway four, Bar Harbor. Uh, Desert Fox here, there's no bot. Uh, the way he put it in is fine. So now we're on a glide slope. Now we can descend with the glide slope. Descending with the glide slope, we'll go flaps to and uh, gear. Flight attendants, prepare cabin for arrival. And again, I would be tuned to the I, I would be tuned to the DME for the ILS. But I'm pretending that that DME doesn't work, so I just have it tuned to the Banger VOR. When we get to 2100, we'll know we're on a seven mile final. 2100 and on glide slope, we'll know we're on a seven mile final. Not quite seeing the airport just yet.
Harbor traffic, Douglas 5, 1 4 Delta Victors. Six mile final, ILS 2 2. We're going to circle uh, left down with the runway 4, Bar Harbor. And remember, we can go down to 600 looking for the airport. And uh, at 90 knots, we said we were. Four minutes. I think I do see the runway, by the way. Yeah, I do. I do see it. Right here. So we're going to intentionally go enter a left down window. Far Harbor traffic, Douglas 5, 1 4 Delta Victor's on about a four mile final. ILS 2-2, we're going to break off into a, a left downwind to runway 4 Bar Harbor. Right, so at this point, it's all a visual maneuver, essentially exactly as you would do at VFR. We can go down to 600 feet, but I'm just going to do it from normal pattern altitude. Got two more notches of flaps to go. We'll just we'll go ahead and say that we're cleared for uh, cleared to, uh, for landing because it's non-towered. We don't need a clearance. We'll just announce our intentions, which we've done. Two more notches of flaps. The gear is uh, already deployed, so the only thing we're really holding on is the flaps. And again, landing on four, it's going to be a uh, left turn to the banger VOR if we go missed. Right turn off down toward the end if we do land successfully. Yeah, let's turn to a a little bit more of a 2-2 heading here, a little bit more of a true uh, true downwind. Picked up a little bit of excess altitude and uh, we're a little slow. Bar Harbor traffic, Douglas 514 Delta Victor's left downwind midfield runway 4 of our armor. Bahaba. I know. I, I know. I'm still saying it wrong, guys. Last call for the predictions, by the way, is going to be when I turn final. So when I go from base to final, that's when you need to be typing if you haven't already got your prediction in. Again, we're predicting the vertical descent rate, so the uh, the feet per minute down as we uh, as we touch down. Lower the number, the softer the landing. Obviously, it's nice and cold, snowy. You know, we don't want to grease the landing too much. We want to kind of put it down a little firmly, but, you know, that's that's what you do in the real world in these situations. Here, we're going to try and uh, try and grease it on nice and smooth for you. But again, with with slippery wind weather conditions, you, you definitely want to be judicious about get, getting the weight onto the wheels nice and promptly. So I think we can go ahead and Bar Harbor traffic, Douglas 5 for 4 Dr. Victor left downwind to left base runway 4 Bar Harbor. So 13 is about our base heading. Go ahead and get flaps 4 in. I think it's going to be a pretty pretty prompt turn right onto the base there, or right onto the final. Yep, 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 yep. 
We'll aim for 75 knots down final, 70 over the numbers. We do now have down, uh, yeah, down, gear down in green, flaps four set and checked. A right turn direct to the Bangor, Bangor at VOR if we go missed in 4,000. Oops, under, undercut the turn there. And a uh, roll it long, turn it right if we do uh, get down successfully. Landing checks complete. We are cleared to land or have self-announced landing intentions. I think we're good to go here, guys. Having a little trouble seeing... Okay, yeah, so we're a little off. I was actually aiming for the wrong thing. I was aiming for that. <laughs> we'll call it a modified, uh, modified final. <laughs> Seventy-five over the fence, seventy over the numbers. We're looking pretty good there. A little left of center line. We'll see if we can fix it as best we can. Oh, bounced it a little bit. One thirty-three is the winning number. Not too bad. I didn't quite get the flare timing right. Hard to see the surface actually, but uh, yeah, not too bad. We'll take that. We'll take that. One thirty-three again is winning number. We'll come back and you guys can figure out who the winner was. Probably well before I can. And as soon as we get clear, we do need to cancel our IFR clearance. Again, we're going to roll it past the crossing runway. Make the next right turn. And then we'll switch back over and uh, cancel our IFR. So the turn to, from base to final was a little sloppy. I undershot the turn and then lined up with the wrong thing. Other than that, I uh, was, was fairly happy with that. 133 was the winning number. 133. We'll go ahead and get the uh, tailwheel unlocked. And then we'll make the right turn here. Yeah, it's a pretty narrow taxiway. I don't see, don't expect they see a lot of DC threes at this airport. Get across the hold short. Get the flaps stowed. Bar Harbor traffic. Douglas 514 Delta Victor is clear of runway 4 at Bar Harbor. We're going to cross runway 17 on the way into the terminal, Bar Harbor. Bar Harbor, Bar Harbor, Bar Harbor. All right, anti-collision off, landing lights off, taxi lights already on, veto heat off, anti-icing was already off, the fuel pumps can come off, cows can go open. We'll stay on the taxiway as best we can here. Oh, crap. Come on, brakes. All right, we'll just spin it around. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't reach my pedals. Let's get back on the taxiway. Alright. 
I got the flap stowed. All right, so let's get back over onto uh, Sheed's frequency. 3372. I'm sorry, no, he's on 347. Center 5 and 4 Delta Victor, stand up on Harbor Cancel IFR. Center 5 and 4 Delta Victor, Boston Center, FX Cancel Station received, and good job passing IFR 22. Give me a couple clicks. All right, so we did have a, a we did have a uh, ding worthy altitude deviation on the approach as I slipped below that 3,000 until I was established. But caught it in time, I guess either she didn't see it or he realized that I saw it and caught it and fixed it. So, real world probably wouldn't have passed you on the check ride, but uh, good enough for that sim work. Where we go? <laughs> Oh, come on. Yeah, this thing is so hard to... Any kind, I mean, it's a, it's a really gusty wind down here, guys. I'm not, not trying to make too many excuses, but... Tail draggers are notoriously difficult to handle on the ground and explain with any kind of a wind. I think just wants the weather vane on you. Come on. Turn right, buddy. Turn right. And I'm, I'm not scooched close enough to the pedals to... I may need to adjust those pedals closer to me. If I, if I did have the differential throttle setup, that would help. Come on. Left brake. Left, 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 left. Uh, come on. There we go. There we go. Well, I said they don't see a lot of DC-3s here, but there's looks like another one sitting right over there. All right, I think we got it. I'm really riding the brakes bad. But I think we got it now, finally. We'll do our best not to wing, wingtip stripe, strike our neighbors as we park this thing. Uh, how are we doing with that? Eh, that's about what I thought. <laughs> Parking brake will go on there. All right. Whew. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll run back through, but I think you may be correct as far as the winner goes. Let me uh, go ahead and get the plane shut down. We'll talk about the uh, ETA and fuel estimates. Make sure that we got everything done. Tailwheel can go back to the locked position. Parking brake is on. Taxi light can come off. The transponder can go off as well. So 1,200 and off. Let's go ahead and get both engines into cutoff. That's uh, mix, magnetos, and uh, generators. And we can go ahead and close up the cow flaps. We'll get the doors open. And let's take a peek at it from the outside. There we are. You guys can start piling out. And uh, let's check on our fuel and ETA, shall we? So what I had said was on my spreadsheet that we were going to be here at 1140. Or, yeah, 11? Or nine, I'm sorry, 940. What's 0240? Is that 940? 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, yeah. So on the blocks, on the ground at 0240, 
on the blocks at 0245. So we are 15 minutes late. Uh, I would gander that the execution of that approach accounted for some of that. Yeah, it didn't look too bad. So if you assume that the localizer line went there, right? Not too bad. Again, we know that that we know that that turn from uh, base to final was cut short. That's not ideal. But we got it. We got it sorted out. Yeah, so it wasn't perfect execution, but good enough to pass the rating, which is good. Uh, and we'll watch, uh, we'll watch a few of the landing replays as well, so we'll get to that in just a moment. Let's go ahead and finish up the shutdown of the plane. We'll come back and uh, figure out who our winner was for our landing rate raffle entry. Do I owe anybody else any raffle tickets for the Alphabets raffle? We got all those taken care of? No. Okay, good. All right, so uh, we got the engine shut down, and we talked about the, oh, and what was the um, what was the remaining fuel? We're supposed to end with 229 gallons, which would be uh, if it was 220 per tank, that'd be 110, that'd be 55. Well, actually, we don't, don't want to just divide it by four. We want to because we don't have the same amount in each tank. Although miraculously, we're not too far off from that. 50, 100, 150, 200. Oh, we're supposed to have 229. So yeah, that worked out not too bad actually. All right, it's so prop and uh, throttle levers can come down, radio master and inverter can come off. No smoking, nav and uh, beacon lights. Oh, fast and seatbelt lights could have already come off as you guys pile out. So the rest of the lights come off, get the uh, fuel tanks closed up and yeah, turned off. And we already did the cow flaps. And we can get the master battery closed up the doors and good to go. We'll watch a couple replays, but we do want to verify um, indeed who was the, who was the uh, winner. So let's go ahead and button up the plane and then we'll skip back through the chat and see. 133 was the winning number. Let's see how you guys were. 120. <coughs> pretty darn close. 148. Who is that with the raid? We got the off-scheduled descent is hitting us with the raid. Yeah, we just landed the DC-3 down at Bar Harbor. So those of you joining from uh, off-scheduled descent stream, welcome, welcome. Appreciate you being here. But unfortunately, we are kind of wrapping it up for the night. So well, I apologize for the timing. But we'll find somebody to send you over to uh, and uh, find somebody good to keep the love going. So do sit tight. We will take care of that in just a moment. We've got a few replays of the landing to watch as well. Um... Anyway, so let's go back through those uh, those landing rate predictions. 120 is, was pretty close. Uh, 148 was 15 away. So, and Desert Fox with the 120 was 13 away. And yeah, so we did have a 130 through uh, 122, which was 11 away. That's the that's the guess there from P Bober one. So, I think that's gonna do it. Anybody closer than 11? Papa Charlie pretty close with that 145 it was 12 away. Oh my gosh. So people were edged out Papa Charlie just by one. Then uh, looks like the, the rest of the ones that came in were higher and lower than that. So yeah, it is that Peep over one. Congratulations. You get an automatic entry into our monthly landing rate raffle. We solicit predictions. Closest predictor gets an automatic entry on December the 29th. I think it is last Wednesday in December. Um, we're going to go ahead and pull the uh, pull the winner. The winner gets their choice of any one of the following items. Any one of our Slant Alpha merch items. The black t-shirt, the white with black trim t-shirt, the, or the plain white t-shirt with the Slant Alpha logo on front. we got the ball cap, mouse pad. we got the traditional and tapered coffee mugs or uh, the tote bag. And if you don't want any of my crap and you happen to be the winner, that's fine too. You, you can uh, opt instead for a $25 Amazon card or a $25 Explain a Workstore card. If you uh, if you prefer, so there you go. You're uh, you're entered into that raffle, Pebober, on December the 29th. We'll pull the name out of the hat. If it happens to be you, 
Uh, and if you're on the stream that day, awesome. If you're not on the stream that day, don't worry about it, as we will contact you over Twitch Whispers to let you know. So just check in on your Twitch Whispers uh, at the end of December if you don't happen to be on the uh, on the stream with us that night. Did I? I know we. Um, I know we had quite a few. F uh, no, we got Digi Driver that was just that latest follower. Thank you so much for that. We appreciate it. Hope that you'll stop back and see us. We'll talk in a, just a few moments about what's coming up on the stream. Um, who else stopped in that I didn't say hi to? Had a few folks that jumped into the contest that uh, that were first timers. So Sweaty Auburn was here with the guests of 400. This Sweaty Auburn, welcome. Appreciate you stopping in. Source Control said hello there. And again, P Bober. Sky173 popped in. Blood Red Rage said hi there, or gave a guess as well. And I think, uh, I think we caught everybody. And then we got that raid toward the end from uh, off schedule. All right, very cool. Thanks, guys, for uh, stopping in. Let's go ahead and check out a few of the replays here. Uh, we got yeah, so X pilot automatically disconnected us in that circumstance, which is good. And uh, with the follow from Keebover as well. All right, yeah, you don't want to watch my crappy taxiing. There's a there's a really good strong wind here, and man, it really affected my taxi. But let's um, let's check out the uh, whoa. What? There we are, looking through a windsock or something there. And then we did get did get a little bit of a bounce going, so we'll have to. Have to excuse me for that. We were left the center line, and oh uh, well, a little bit of a little bit of a Douglas bounce there. Not too bad. Certainly didn't get the flare timing the way I wanted it, but uh, we'll take it. it. Was pretty pretty close to the blocks. So pretty good on the uh, speed, and again, we we knew we were left the center line with that uh, that nice brisk wind blowing us. We knew we were left the center line. Corrected as best as we could, but. Uh, but yeah, not too bad. Not too bad. Let's wind it back. Watch a couple other angles here. Now Melvin likes this one here. A little low on a little low on short final too, I guess. Yeah, how how bad were we with the center line? Yeah, it was so both tires fully to the left. So yeah, it was a pretty pretty bad uh, left deviation on the center line. The bounce was oh, bounce was a little worse than I thought. Eh, it's a Douglas. They're they're built for that, right? All right, let's do one more. Let's do that one. That one. There we go. There we go. There's the view coming in. All right, guys. Well, like I said, we generally fly for you Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 7 p.m. Eastern time. We're actually going to be off uh, this coming Friday as I've got some uh, anniversary travel plans with the wifey, but we're back with you on Monday. Now, Monday, instead of being on our own channel here we're going to be over on the vet usa channel another one of those friday night hotspot fno preview shows this friday of course we got the riverboat fno which of course i'm going to miss with my travel plans next friday though we've got the ending the year in paradise friday night ops event in honolulu control facilities area so we're going to be talking with representatives from the pacific control facility on that sim uh, on monday at 8 p.m eastern on that usa's twitch and uh, discussing some of the tips and tricks for avoiding some of the p common uh, mistakes into and out of the fields that they're featuring in that uh, Hawaiian FNO a week from Friday. So uh, the next one after that, Tuesday the 14th, like I said, we're very, very much, it's a, it, we're off schedule, not to drop a name, but we're off schedule this week and next week uh, because there's so much going on in December. The 14th of December, we're going to be flying along with the Virtual USA Flying Club. We will get that Mooney Ovation for Flight Sim 2020 up and running on that day. So uh, that'll be the 
Escanaba in the Moonlight event with the Virtual USA Flying Club. We'll be flying up in northern Michigan with that Mooney, uh, Mooney Ovation for Flight Sim 2020 on Tuesday the 14th at 7 p.m. back on our channel. The full show schedule, by the way, is available for you underneath the About tab on the, uh, on the picture window here, or you can check it out on our Facebook page or our Discord server. The links for Facebook and Discord are down there underneath the, uh, yeah, it's across the bottom of the screen. You can jump in on that Discord chat 24-7. If I missed any of the conversation, by the way, was not at all intentional, but uh, pop over into Discord and ask any questions that you had that I didn't get to tonight. Or uh, just pop over there and say hi if you'd like. The uh, YouTube channel is on the bottom left-hand side of the screen, and that is our flight archive. All of our old flight broadcasts are there. And in addition to that, we've got some tutorials that we call uh, VATSIM tutorials for uh, advice on how to get onto VATSIM, what to say to controllers, how to put routes together. We're going to watch me do some fishtailing and some, some uh, ground looping here on the taxi end, but that's all right. Um, how to put uh, routes together, how to read sectionals, and uh, what to say to controllers and stuff like that. Yeah, here's where we did our first excursion. But that's over on our YouTube channel, bottom left-hand side of the... Uh, the channel. We talked about the show schedule, but if you want to know what's coming up on the short, short term on the channel, you can always check out the Facebook and Twitter pages. We're Slant Alpha on both of those venues. All right, guys. Thanks again for stopping in and checking us out tonight. Hope that you, uh, hope that you enjoyed as we uh, <laughs> a tower view that's like in the middle of a windsock or something. Hope that you enjoyed as we made our trek from Bradley to Bar Harbor in the Douglas DC-3, the AeroWorks Freeware DC-3 for X-Plane 11. I hope that you did enjoy. We will, uh, who we're going to send you over to. Oh, I got a great idea, guys. You want to see how air traffic control on VATSIM is done. We were talking about seeing the view from, uh, Mr. Sheed. Well, he's going to be on for, I think he might be wrapping up, actually. But uh, one of our other friends that does air traffic control on the VATSIM network is working Atlanta Center right now. His name is Cleared Approach. He is actually a real-world air traffic controller in the Fort Worth Air TCC, but he controls on VATSIM an awful lot, and tonight he's working Atlanta Center on VATSIM. We'll send you over to him. He's another one, but, but like me, he loves to talk about why he does what he's doing, the different procedures and rules that he has to follow, and uh, what goes into... Uh, the decisions that he makes as a controller so he's a good one to ask questions to as far as you know why they do things the way they do things or you know what's the right way to do this or say this or or uh, whatever else you whatever other questions you might have for that same air traffic controllers he's a good one to ask again his name is clear approach sit tight with us we're gonna go ahead and kick you over to him automatically and uh, we do appreciate you all once again stopping in okay so that's gonna wrap it up for me thanks for flying along with us again tonight uh, we will be back with you on Monday on the VATSIM USA channel, and then back with you Wednesday, a week from, no, Tuesday, Tuesday night from Northern Michigan. So uh, until then, guys, have a great rest of your week, and be healthy and safe in your own travels and your own adventures. Talk to you Monday. <laughs>